And at this time, we ask that everyone rise as we open in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil hallelujah father Yahweh we come before you ever so humbly on this seventh day Shabbat as the body of your son Yahshua HaMashiach giving Torah and Hosanna's unto your Kodesh name for once again breathing the breath of life into each and every one of our vessels and for standing us up wheresoever you scattered us throughout the world for allowing our feet to be planted upon the floor this morning and for allowing us to see another day giving us the opportunity one more time to sing praises unto you Abba Yahweh told you for everything in which you've endowed us with from the breath of life in which you put in our lungs to sing praises unto you to the body in which we've been given to do your will father we told you for food clothing shelter safety protection we told you for the men for the legions of angels in which you've dispatched all throughout this world to watch over us as your people to shield us to heal us to guide us and to direct our path we told you for giving us a mind to diligently seek after your ruach hakodesh we told you for the instruction of the ruach hakodesh as well as for your messengers wheresoever you place them throughout the world to declare unto us what thus saith Yahweh. And we ask of you to please continually, along with all of the wonderful blessings in which you load us up with each and every day of our lives, we ask that you continually also give us a ruach of obedience to hear your word and to take the word sincerely into our hearts and to act upon it. And we also ask of you to please continually watch over each and every one of us. Keep us not just free from hurt, harm, and danger, but also keep us from being taken captive of Hashatan at his will. Keep us from lending our bodies as vessels for Shaitan's use, but instead place within our bodies a spirit of sincerity, a ruach of sincerity and truth to make us vessels fit for the master, Yahshua HaMashiach's use. And we ask of you also that you continually endow those of your people, Israel, who are sick with the healing that they stand in need of. Whatsoever the ailment may be, whether it be carpal tunnel syndrome, arthritis, congestive heart failure, whether it be spiritual conditions of illnesses, Father Yahweh, whatsoever the case may be, we ask that you heal your people in every manner in which we need healing, individually, as well as collectively as a nation. And Father, we ask of you that in this very hour that you comfort those who are in the house of mourning. We ask that you wipe away the tears of sadness, sorrow, and grief from your people. And we ask that in the time that you see fit, that you replace those same spirits of heaviness, those same spirits of sorrow and sadness. Replace those things with joy and gladness and hope in you and in your son, Yahshua HaMashiach. We beg of you that you also remember those of your people who may lack this world's goods, those who may not have the necessary means to do what they need to in this lifetime, whether it be providing food, clothing, and shelter for themselves or families, those that may be unemployed as well as those that may be under employed we ask that you remember them all father and we beg of you take them in the hollow of your hand and keep them from doing anything hastily or rashly to obtain this world's goods father and we ask that you keep them also from doing anything that would jeopardize their chances at salvation but we ask that in the hour in which you see fit to do so emerge in their lives father and provide everything which they stand in need of and more abundantly for their faith and their belief in you we beg of you also that you look down from the heavens upon those who deprive your people of the things in which they stand in need of those who fight against israel without a cause those who seek to inconvenience israel and make their lives more difficult than what they need to and father we ask of you also that you fight against them who fight against your people without a cause we ask that every weapon in which they implore against israel be taken Taken out of their hands and turned upon their own heads and heads of their households. We ask that every trap that is set for Israel allow the ones who created the device and the snare to fall in the trap instead of your people. And we ask that you deliver your people from every snare and gin that is set for their souls. And we ask of you also that anybody who joins hands and forms alliances with the wicked adversaries of Israel, we ask that you allow them to be overtaken in their own devices, Abba Yah. And also, we ask that you pour out your wrath 
wrath and hot displeasure upon all of Israel's adversaries, not just in this lifetime, but in the world to come. And we ask that in the world to come, we ask that you pour out even greater abundance of your wrath, your disdain, your judgment, your hot displeasure upon all those who fight against Israel, all those who fight against your Torah, and all those who fight against and reject Yahshua HaMashiach. We ask that you knock them down to the earth. And we ask that you smear their faces with shame and fill their souls and their bodies and their minds with everlasting torment and perpetual grief, Abba Yahweh, for rising up against you and all that pertains unto you. And Father, we ask that you spare and deliver your people, Israel, from such torment. And we ask that you keep us wrapped in the hollow of your hand and let us not deviate from that path that leads unto life everlasting, but allow us to be able to be found pleasing, favorable honorable and acceptable before you so that in the day of judgment we'll be presented before your throne and able to see your face in peace. Abba Yah, we ask these things of you ever so humbly yet sincerely in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach we pray. Hallelujah. Dear family, you're welcome to take your seats. We told Almighty Yahweh for allowing all of us to be able to gather here and to be able to make it here safely, whether we traveled a short distance or whether we had a long, lengthy commute. But we nevertheless told Almighty Yahweh for allowing us all to return to his bayette, even those who may not have even had to leave the comfort of their homes but are able to join us online. We told Almighty Yahweh for baruching you all with that ability as well. I'm going to open this portion of our Shabbat observance reading from the book of Tehillim. Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings shall you trust His truth. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. And you shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh unto thee. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you've made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh unto your dwelling. For he shall give his angels or his malak charge over thee to keep you in all your ways. And they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Yeah. Dear family, if you do nothing else in this lifetime, obey Almighty Yahweh, fear him, keep his commandments, and set your trust in him so that he can grant unto you deliverance from all that Shaitan seeks to do unto those that call upon the name of Yahweh in these latter days. Again, set your trust in Almighty Yahweh and allow it to not be moved like a tree that's planted by the waters. And at this time, I present to you Zakain Dawid, Yachin Hanan Sr. Let us receive him by rendering unto Almighty Yahweh's Kodesh name the highest form of praise, which is Hallelujah. 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 Shalom Yisrael. We do truly give Almighty Yahweh all the honor and the praise that is due unto his most precious name. We told to Yah for the gift of life and our health, our strength, even in the midst of tremendous toil, trials, and tribulations. We still are able to tow to Yah for the beauty of the gift of life. We are in an era of time where life is no longer valued. Life is not precious, even to many that are really conditioned, close enough to Almighty Yah to see and understand the value and the beauty of life. We're just in that era of time where life is meaningless to all. Total Yah, dear brother. We 
told it, y'all, in this era of time to at least have an opportunity to know. More often than not, we don't know what we think that we know. This is a very strange generation when held up in comparison to the word of Yahweh and what Yah says that we should do, should be doing, should know and or be knowing. This is a very strange generation. And I do say strange when we look at the word of Yahweh. Each and every one of us should be able to measure our lives according to the word of Yah as opposed to measuring our lives according to ourselves and a standard that we have set. That is a most dangerous precedent or a terrible trend that is walking to and fro throughout the face of this entire earth. I thought earlier in the week on the pressure that's put on the priesthood, the prophets, the messengers of Yahweh, I'll even go as far as to include a prophetess to really keep a people in line or a nation that really is required to know something. If we look at the world, I'll jump all the way overseas and I'll look at Buckingham Palace. A lot goes into maintaining an empire that claims that the sun never sets upon that empire. Meaning, they've gone around the world in the last several hundred years and have colonized so many different nations, have brought their culture to the world and impacted so many people in such a way that if the sun sets in this region of the world, somewhere where it has not set, that culture, that authority, that rulership is still in command. Thus bringing essence to the term, the sun never sets on the British Empire. But the truth of the matter is that the sun never sets on the Torah of Yahweh and Yahweh's Torah keepers. Now where Yisrael gets in trouble in the latter days is because we won't hear anybody. You can't hear anybody. It's our souls, our spirit, our mind has been hollowed out. There are tools and weapons used in the earth. There is a tool that they use to drill for subway systems and underground tunnels that they built, even sometimes cities underground where the drill and the needle that they use in diameter, sometimes it's 10, 15 feet in diameter. It's just boring and digging underground constantly, making large holes, holes large enough to run a city bus through that underground and as we look at that power to bore and to drill it hollows out certain points in the earth but that's what sin has done to the soul of humanity it has hollowed out our minds and our bodies to a point and a degree where I'm reminded of what the old folks used to say. Just be careful what you pray for because you just might get it. I remember a conversation I had here with a man in Israel, and he was raising a very interesting point a very sophisticatedly Yahweh challenging point. And he was expressing how a messenger of Yah can know many things, but he can't possibly know everything. And it was a very subtle and sophisticated way to challenge the power of Yahweh or the knowledge of Yahweh. And I always look at things in life, and I'm not saying this from a self-righteous perspective or I'm better than you. I always look at things from a perspective of where is Yahweh in the midst of this? We're reminded in scripture where Yahweh said, they that handled the law, 
knew me not. Meaning, men of the priesthood, they were preaching, they were teaching, even in this era, they're emerging, but they don't know how to handle the law so that it becomes applicable in all situations. It becomes applicable in all situations in life. Let me make sure this is silence. Let me shut this thing down. I don't need nobody calling me. You know, some people, they'll call me. Oh, he's up teaching. Let me call him now. We're in a dangerous age. I look at people and you look in their eyes sometimes and their poor little spirits have been just hollowed out. They're motionless. They're soulless. They're reactionless to things that should energize them. There was a danger in that for the priesthood. And the danger in that is Yahweh will take them. He'll give them rest. When the people won't hear, Yahweh, he'll take those priests. Up. And Yahshua mentions in Revelation how when the assemblies weren't in proper order, he would remove their candlestick. I pray that y'all keep me around just long enough to continue to teach it, to continue to walk and to work with Yisrael. But if Yah takes the candlestick, then that means that he has rejected that people because they will not hear. And then a thing would have to somewhat start all over again. It don't mean that the priesthood sinned. It don't mean that all of the people sinned, but sometimes Yah will take away the base of the knowledge so as to, as he did in the days of old, scatter the language. Scatter the minds and scatter the culture as he did at the Tower of Babel. And I bring all that up because 24 years ago today, right around 10, 28 a.m., when we lost Elder Johnson, and I thought on that, and I was reflecting this week on the conditions in the assembly right around the time of his passing. And I reflect back on the thing. It's funny how Yah has given man a mind to recall. We can do things against Almighty Yah. We can sin, we can do well, we can do right, we can laugh, we can cry, but it is a beautiful thing how Yah gives the mind the ability to recall those memories, whether good or bad. So as to help one in the current and in the future, get right with Yah. It makes absolutely no sense to sit anywhere. I don't care if you're online or actually in a building with the shepherd. It makes absolutely no sense to sit under a shepherd year after year after year after year and never grow any stronger. It makes absolutely no sense to not know the power of Yahweh, to have not experienced it, to have not come into the bonds of the unity of Yahshua. Or even in what I'm going to talk about today, the fellowship of Yahweh. I want to touch on something and just slow walk us back. I, I, I watch people all the time. I always said this to my Isha and to my children about specific things. I was doing some research and I put the research project aside a, a while ago and the other day. I was cleaning in my office and the whole file just happened to fall on the floor right at my feet. And what I was looking at was the contemporary, that is the modern era deaths of the messengers of Yahweh. Somewhere around 1889, I was looking at some Hebrews and how the messengers died. Uh, one was poisoned. Uh, one died under mysterious circumstances, head trauma, whatever. Autopsies weren't as good then as they are now, but head trauma, things of that nature. I was looking at it and compiling all this. And that file fell out at my feet early in the week. And I looked at it. I said to myself, I'm going to pick back up on that. Because y'all didn't let it fall out like that for nothing. And I'll go back and I'll look at that. But there is this pattern that Yahweh displays for Yisrael. 
I always tell my wife and, and my family, my, my close family, I always say, when you're doing specific things, don't always go the same way all the time. Don't always do everything all the time. But also, don't let anyone take you off of your planned or projected schedule. Sometimes at least a little thing can happen. You can it, there, there are certain ways in which you can be two people. Martin King was murdered because his schedule was altered at the last few moments of his life. And because his schedule was altered and he really didn't challenge it or question it, he was put into a position where he was lured out on the balcony at the appropriate moment so that he could be shot. Malcolm X was murdered the same way because specific people from the security detail and things of that nature, at the last possible moment, pulled out, backed away, or left him hanging so as to take him off of the essential schedule in order to set it up to have him murdered. I bring things up like that because in looking at the power of the research and looking at the deaths of some contemporary messengers of Yahweh, I remember when, uh, what's the man? Yahweh bin Yahweh was released from prison. Whether you believe in him or not, that's irrelevant. Just calling on the name of Yahweh draws specific attention to you. And he was released from prison on the condition that he not preach or go anywhere near a congregation affiliated with the name Yahweh. And that's interesting conditions for parole. And the fact that he agreed to that, but then died alone and isolated away from the people. That's a, that's a terrible or horrendous way in which to deal with the leadership. And the children of Israel, we, today, a, a dollar goes a long way. A dollar will make us do anything. Just, just It doesn't even have to be a great amount, but a dollar will make us do anything. So to look at these deaths and the way people die, it's a strange set of circumstances. That's why a lot of times I never go anywhere without... My Isha, or the minister, or a couple of other people that are very close to me, knowing where I'm at or where I'm going, because you can then trace my final moments. You'll know, okay, this or that happened, this or that. You'll, you'll at least know. And I always say that to people. Never let anybody take you off your schedule. The other morning, was it Thursday? Co-worker of mine, he left the job, shut everything down a few minutes after I did. And he left his keys. A young man went there behind us. He found his keys. So he called him, let him know he had his keys. I had nothing to do with the call. But he let him know he had his keys and he hung up. I guess a few minutes later, he calls me. He wants the young man's address. Now, if you two talk, you should have worked the keys or whatever that was out. So anyway, when he talked to me, I didn't know the address. I had to go to a class the next day. I'm setting the backdrop for this. I had to go to a class the next day and I had to take that young man with me. So I said, well, I'm going to meet him up at the office. And what I do is I'll get the keys from him. And before I leave going down towards D.C., I'll shoot past the job site and I'll bring the keys to you. We agreed to that, and that was that. So when I'm moving around in the morning, a lot of times, this is before the sun come up, you watch your environment, watch your surroundings, wherever you are at all times. I had my granddaughter with me up there, I was teaching her the same thing. When you're out, you're in a store, you're shopping, what have you, you don't need to be overly paranoid, in, but always pay attention to your environment. It's just not a coincidence. You see the same person in every aisle you in after a while, or in every store you in all day. Come on. So anyway, I go up there to get the keys, and... I get the phone call from the gentleman. I'm not saying he's setting me up. I'm saying it was a shift in the atmosphere. So he calls me as I'm halfway there. He needs me to double back to go and open the gate at another job site for another employee. Whereas in the morning, that's his routine. He goes there. He opens that gate. He goes to the other job site. That's what he does. Meets up. So I would not allow myself to be rerouted. I wouldn't allow myself to be taken off my schedule now because now I got to stop what I'm doing. I got to go this way to take care of something when I left from over there and was in this direction and headed. And I thought on all of that, how the messengers of Yahweh, and as I said before, I say again, contemporary men that you may or may not have heard of, but I was looking at the mysterious circumstances under which many of them die. And I say this because see the children of Israel, they take leadership lightly. So I haven't brought up a lot about the intelligence community lately and what it is that they're monitoring in the 21st century with their fears of your rise in Yahshua. Some of the biggest name international newspapers and magazines are reporting now on the potential collapse of Western civilization. They're understanding that even according to the word of Yahweh, if you know prophecy, 
America must go first. The Roman Empire must revive itself, which is already in place. And then it must reign for seven years. And then it too will be destroyed by Yahweh's smiting stone. That's where we are in the history of the world right now. See, this doesn't interest the children of Israel. This connection of Yahweh's word and prophecy and connection to your soul, seven, that doesn't interest us. We into the world stuff, the politics. We saw them talking about Black Lives Matter and the marching and the protests, the crime statistics in the city. And we're not really even understanding that. Because if we were understanding that, these type of conversations would not bore us. You ever, you ever, I don't know if y'all, proverbially speaking, you ever been somewhere and you're speaking or you're talking before a crowd will have you, and you can look out and observe and you know the ones that are bored. They're really not into it. They're not paying attention. But then those that know as much of the subject as you do and they're enthused by it. Well, this is Israel in the latter days where everything officially connects to Yahweh's word. And it's up to us as parents, as husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, and children. It's up to us to now be so on point as to not be paranoid, but to be properly prepared by having on the whole armor of Yahweh. This is what we don't want to do. We don't want to get caught doing... Uh, uh, <clears throat> There's a generation that think they already have the arm. I, I was thinking on this. I'm going to get into this subject, man. I'm going to take my time with this. Today's topic is Yisrael. Seek proper fellowship with Yahweh. Seek it. You're going to need it. Now, I back up without disrespecting anybody. I'm just going to look over the years how we do each other as a people. I ain't talking about the world. I ain't talking about black folk. I'm talking about Israel. That is truly awakened. We have this strange, nasty way of dealing with one another. We, we deal with one another in some of the most nasty, violent street ways that there are. We, we, we need to manipulate. I'm going to use a, a, a terrible example. I'll, I'll use myself and my family. A terrible example. Now, I have money in my pocket, but I don't want to spend my money. So I check to see if my if Shaw is home and see how much money she got. So then I said, I'm, I'm, get your pocketbook. Come out with me real quick. Take a ride with me. Now, somehow, some way, I have money in my pocket, but I'm going to connive and manipulate, maneuver, so that I don't have to spend my money to put gas in my own vehicle. So now I got to manipulate her to get it done. Is that right? Now, I'm just using that poor example as an example for how we do almost everything as Israel, we we still in the 21st century, in the winding up age, we still plot, we still plan, we still gossip, we still talk, we still connive. All the things now that really make life so depressing that all this stuff is also the stuff that brings down high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, all these things that come upon us as the sin of life because we're just so bored out of our minds with obeying Yahweh that we have to spice it up by sinning, by lying, by depriving, by conniving so that we lose sight of real living so that when the scripture teaches us small things in life that connect with the law without saying stop slamming the brakes, do that no, 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 this is not that kind of stop it's a automatic keeping of the law because you learn how to apply it. Make sense? Yes. See, this is why Yahweh got on the priesthood when he told Jeremiah the prophet, they that handled the law knew me not. Remember I told you all about the attorney I went to see how he just slid in the chair with wheels on it. He just was talking to me at the dead and then they found out he just kicked it and slid down there about 30 feet, pulled the book off the shelf, slid back to me and opened the book up and Talk to me about blah, 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 blah. I heard everything he said, but I was amazed at the wall. Because every one of the books looked the same. Though they were. But he knew the law so well. He knew where to go to find the applicable statute for my case. He knew the law. That's why he's the attorney and I won. 
We as the people of Yah, we challenge the priesthood. But that's why they're the priesthood and we're not. Or they, they are and you're not. Whatever the case. Let's back up. And I watch everything that has been in the Assembly of Yahweh since I became the pastor over the Assembly of Yahweh as of July 1998. I've been around a little bit now. But I watch everything that comes. This is this is the most interesting point without disrespecting any of you all's friends, your homeboys, your girls, your buddies, your pal. Without disrespecting any of them, I'm going to speak the truth. But I'll pause. And I'll give you a couple seconds to leave. And eventually you don't want to hear this. I'll make that way you all can, you can walk out on me now. Ready? All right, we ready. I've watched so many people come and go in the assembly of Yahweh. And people of Yahweh come and go. They don't belong to us as the priesthood, okay? You belong to Yahweh if you obey. This is the most baffling mystery that I couldn't solve this all week. People have come to the assembly of Yahweh and they say that the spirit of Yahweh led them here. Think on this now. We're here. We're established already when you got here. Just as you say the Spirit led you here. We that are here say that the Spirit of Abba Yahweh established us here. Right? The exchange is no robber. You say you have the Spirit, we say we have the Spirit. Right? How then, if the Spirit led you here, do you come in and cause chaos, cause confusion, be disgruntled, be angry, be upset, same old spirit, over and over again. Remember, I told y'all, you open the door, air goes out, air comes in. Somebody goes out, somebody comes in. How do the same spirits over and over recycle, except we be susceptible to it? In a way, to a point and a degree where we should be coming up higher so that that spirit can't enter in. Make sense? Now, if I manipulate my Isha to go to the gas station and fill up my tank because I don't want to spend my money, then the tank should at least be filled to a point in the degree where I can get what? No more gas in it, right? Now, I done manipulated. I done got the gas. But now, why would I need to come to you to manipulate you to get more gas when the tank is full? Am I making sense yet? So, if our vessels are filled with the Spirit, of the Almighty. Do you know what that means? The spirit of Shaitan cannot enter in. Is that making any sense yet? See, we need to seek the fellowship of Yahweh as opposed to going everywhere thinking we already know. I still study to this very day. I'm going to study Yahweh's word till the day I die. When Yah commands you no longer need to study, you don't have to study. June the 30th, 1998, I sat down at the bed of Elder Johnson. And I was reading some of the Psalms and I was praying with him and talking to him. He wasn't doing a lot of talking. But I sat down on that bed. and I was on the floor, pardon me. And he laid in the bed and I put his hand on my head. Kind of had his hand right up here and just squeezed on my head a little bit. Now I knew what he was doing. That was the 30th of June. I didn't get down there to see him on July the 1st because we went every day. But July the 2nd, when I got the call, I was headed there. He had already passed. And it really broke my heart. Earlier that day on the 30th, my sister said, you pray and ask Yahweh to guide daddy to transfer the power. That's what she said. He had prayed for me earlier that day. And I said to her, I think he already did. Now as I reflect back on that and all the things that went up against the assembly of Yahweh and I've seen it in my lifetime to be able to recognize it today and you say you got to be open with Yahweh's people you got to be honest with Israel you got to let Israel know look every brother ain't a brother every sister is not a sister every spirit is not the spirit of Yahweh and we're going to have to get sharper ourselves in that. There are so many wonderful things that Yahshua and the great disciplined ones were saying to us that were the commandments. 
But when they broke them down into even simpler, smoother terms, we think that it was just a bunch of words, but now it was explanations on how to apply the Torah. This is why they were saying specific things that keeps down gossip, keeps down envy, keeps down backbite. It even keeps down boredom. I'm saying that real slow because I, I know a lot. I can look out and see when y'all bored and y'all pure. The word of Yahweh is so fascinating because he's got to rewrite this entire earth. And you want to be a part of it. And you'll be surprised that sometimes some of the smallest matters that can keep you out of the kingdom. But you have to obey. But you don't want to be seen obeying in a self-imposed righteous state where you just, I know I got it. I know because sometimes it's something so small, so manipulative, so wicked. You're not paying attention to what manner of spirit is motivating you. So by not paying attention, remember, hey, good point. Did Kepha have the Ruach? Did Peter have it? Remember he said something to Yahshua that angered Yahshua? When Yahshua was explaining that he had to die, Peter said, no, master, be it far from me. If he hadn't died, we would not stand the chance at salvation. Now, Peter didn't know that for a small moment, a lying spirit made him utter that. Which was why Yahshua said, get behind me, Satan. You understand? He wasn't calling that man the devil. He knew that at that precise moment, he wasn't paying attention to what he had said or what he had done. See how easy it is to slip? This is why we have to be so humble and yet so careful to maintain each of us our own presence on the road to salvation. So many times we forget, we neglect so much because once the preachers start talking, that's nap time for a lot of us. We, we, we think, you know, look, y'all, even, even the heathens realize that. Even the heathens realize that your children ain't going to make it. In Cicero's essay on old age, Cato is the one that's quoted as having said, those indeed who have no internal resource of happiness will find themselves uneasy in every stage of life. In other words, if the spirit is not within us, everything we do in life, somehow, some way, we'll get it wrong, we'll be angry about it, we're not happy, we can't figure it out, all this, because what's really should be in us is the renewed man, right? Now, even the Gentiles had the audacity to understand this, right? He goes on and starts talking about life in the latter days in America. Now, check this out. He talks about this young generation. Their view of America is nihilistic and myopic. And nihilism is not generally a healthy state of mind. They are shockingly ignorant about the world's religions and stridently secular in their morality. In other words, they, they are without the most high. They, everything is just do whatever you need to do. They assign little value to the great books. They live largely solitary lives. It's not a bad thing to be a solitary person. It's just when you have no fellowship, no communication ever with hardly anybody. Somebody can sometimes look at you and discern something wrong. Something going on. Something's empty. Now, this is, this is a heathen. They are inextricably connected to their phones. That's true. But largely disconnected from their parents, from churches, or from their communities. Instead, they eat alone. They study alone. They even socialize alone in a virtual world untethered to the physical world. They are often friendless and depressed, which explains why they will harm themselves and commit suicide at a rate unrivaled anywhere in American history. Children just get <laughs> anyway. They are sympathetic to the iconoclasms and anachronisms, violence, 
and ritualistic self-loathing on display in the streets of Portland, Seattle, Minneapolis, Baltimore, New York, and elsewhere. Now, this word iconoclasm, anybody know what iconoclasm is? Well, iconoclasm is now a level of uh, disdain, distrust, or disrespect for established, basic established spiritual principles. So in other words, things like keep my commandments and live, whatever. You now challenge the commandments while saying that you keep the commandments, but you challenge the way in which it's done. You'll speak against it with such high level ignorance that you think you are above it and thus think you're doing it. You understand? See, this is what I was saying earlier when the man said to me that, that a priest or pastor can't possibly know everything. You can't just, well, when y'all would give them knowledge and understanding of specific things, he said the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of Yahweh. That doesn't make the priest the captain of the ship. They're standing in the captain's stead until he comes. But when you seek to diminish the value system that Yahweh himself established, now you actually chip away at your own knowledge base. Because if we attack the knowledge base, we can't possibly learn it. I watched in class the other day the white folks, 11 white folks, two black men. I watched the white folks chip away at everything that the teacher was teaching. They were arrogant. They were high-minded. They thought themselves to be above the teaching. You had to take a little test and you know, get relicensed and all this. But it was amazing to just watch how they know everything. They bluffed their way through everything. But when he got to the black men, he said that we failed the test. The two of us, we failed. I immediately challenged. I said, no, I ain't going for that. Let me see the sheet that you're using to judge the criteria. This. I know all the stuff that was on there. I knew it well enough to pass with at least 80. So let me see that. He says, no, I got it. Let me double check to make sure. And as he started double checking to make sure, oh, no, no, you're right. You needed a minimum of 35 out of 50 to pass. Well, I only had six wrong. I only had six wrong. But had I sat there and not spoke up, he would have failed me. You, you understand? So I, I had the two black men fail. Let all white folks, this was, this was done. So the other young man, by not being spiritual enough to catch on, last thing I told him when we went in the room, I said, now, nah, now, nah, we're going to hear now. Put, put your black man face, put the real black man face on. So he failed. 25 out of 25. So I sat there with him, had to wait. He'd take the test. When you get it wrong, the 25 you got right, they put that to the side. They'll pick through the ones you got wrong, and they'll let you go back, get them. You got to get a certain percentage right. So... He guessed halfway through the 25. Now he's got 11 of those right. He guessed halfway through the rest. He got something else right. He had to keep on doing it. So he was down to one answer before the man would pass him. And I said, I'll be out. I got to go out and do some work on my tablet and get the reports in and everything. When I left the room, he gave the man the answer just so he could pass him. Now I'm bringing up a point is when we study Scripture teaches us that the student is not above his teacher. It is enough that the student be like his teacher. That's the word of Yahweh. I've seen so many times in my life where men, they come in and they think to surpass the established order. So I never disrespected the teacher the whole time he was talking, but I did challenge. I said, well, nah, I don't think I felt that. Let me see that. And immediately he said, well, no, let me double check it again. There's this sheet. They got the holes in it. And all they do is put it on top of yours. And if you got them right, it's going to match up. It's going to line up. Well, lo and behold, it started matching up when I stood up. I didn't stand to disrespect him, but I, stood, I said, let me see it. I want to see what I got wrong. And then suddenly I had it right. Now, I'm not saying that's how we do the law of Yahweh because, see, we have to know the law of Yahweh so much so that we're living it, right? You walk through Macy's, you know the commandment of Yahweh well enough, thou shalt not steal. You walk out that door having bought something or not bought something. The alarm should not go off on you because you lived the law well enough you know you did not steal okay this is how we have to live well enough that in any given situation we are able to apply the law of Yahweh right then and there Yisrael you're no longer in that age now where you can 
but I got to go back and get that straight. I got to go back and straighten them out. I got to go say something. No, you have to apply it right then and there. You understand me? We're not in the era where, where, where we now have room for mistakes. We have to perfection. Are you hearing me? We have to go on unto perfection. Listen to what this Gentile says. In some, they are disdainful of any type of knowledge beyond their computer screens. And they're alienated from the values, the aspirations, the institutions, or commitments that traditionally define what growing up means. This is why men can be 50 years old and still live in the house with their mother and expect her to pay the rent, gas hunting, and everything else while he lay in the basement and smoke weed for all day and run in and out the house with his buddies or his girlfriend. This is the type of world we're in now. All the generations might remark on this generation's immaturity, its absorption with thought, with its absorption with thought and desires unworthy of serious life, and they'd be right. It's not a good sign when so many young Americans are skeptical of marriage and family. It's not a good sign when so many young Americans are so wholly indifferent to the possibility of Yahweh or spirituality to thinking about life's big questions and to seeking wisdom. It is not a good sign when so many young Americans are so dogmatic but yet so unread. It is not a good sign when so many young Americans find their social life in social media. It is not a good sign when so many young Americans are so anxious, depressed, and unhappy that they will engage in self-harm. Then comes the big question. What if the self-isolation and despair, the consumerism, the cult of celebrity, the hectoring of political correctness, the disdain for country and the retreat from your kin, the fetishization of feelings and the re, re relativization of ethics and the indulgence of vulgarity and obscenity are not ordinary generational schisms, but rather Symptoms of something far worse, a powerful pestilence of the collective soul. I think they are, and that is the reason why I write this book to sound an alarm. He says that there's a whole generation out here, void of receiving the spirit, void of receiving knowledge, and void. This is a generation that Yahweh is literally rejecting. First John chapter one, Israel seek proper fellowship with Yahweh. So in order to seek proper fellowship, I'm going to have to define it. Am I correct? We need to know what fellowship is. See, fellowship bears the equivalence of partnership. When we study the word of Yahweh and pull our definition of fellowship from the scripture. Okay. Fellowship. Drawing closer on partnership, which is based upon a common interest. Ain't that how you build the nation? All the people have a common interest. If it just start off with one man, one woman, if that's how you build the nation, they have a common interest. They produce a family. They teach that value system, that common interest to those children. Those children marry. Everybody else that comes into that circle, whatever the case may be, now must be introduced to that common interest. Am I correct? See, even with Israel, when we intermarry, even among the Gentiles, check this point now, Israel. Even when you intermarry among the Gentiles and they come in unto you, y'all would put that law there because he knew that we were all pretty much now just so hard headed. You should interlock among yourselves. But in the event, somebody of another nationality, they now have to buy into your culture, not you into theirs. Am I making sense yet? This is what a fellowship does. Okay? First John 1 and 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, the word of life. Now notice he's talking about Yahshua and all the conditions that surround that man. I have, just as they do, a disdain for people who really disregard Yahshua. I really do. I mean that. You can't disregard Yahshua and then have sons and now you want to respect your son. No, you are. You're totally out of order now. Because see, this was from the beginning. Listen now. 
For the life was manifested. Stop right there. The whole life of Israel, right down to the last man standing of the 144,000 that will have lived it, that have gotten it perfectly correct. That whole life was manifested before all the world, before the world began in Yahshua. Do you hear me? So we can't maintain any disdain for Hamashiach and then respect Joe Biden. Or respect Putin. See, people tend to respect the leaders with the guns. You ever notice that? People respect the ones with the muscle and the might and the power. Did y'all see the... No, sorry. Strike that question from the record. Let me tell y'all what was on the evening news. They did an interview the other day on the evening news and they talked with one of the chancellors or businessmen from Germany, was it? Germany has to send Russia $2 billion a month. They're paying off some debt. Two billion a month. And the man for Germany was speaking. He really saw with the way he was defending Russia. He was saying it somewhere where, nah, nah, we got these deals, we got these debts, we got this, we got that, and other, and we gotta send them that money. We owe them this, that, and the other. But he won't be able to do anything with the money on the international market, this, that, and the other. And the news reporter said, ah, 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 come on now, come on now. Putin can spend that money elsewhere, and these sanctions have done virtually nothing to hurt him or his economy. In fact, it has lifted him up. ABC Evening News this week. She said it. And the man had to admit it himself. Now, in case you all don't know and understand the depth of what's going on with Ukraine, first of all, let's be clear. Putin is not with this Western civilization's new world order. He ain't on board with Yahweh, but he ain't on board with this mark of the beast and mark of the and everybody. And he's letting them know, you ain't going to do it to me. All right, I kind of like that part of Putin. I like that side. At least somebody letting them know, you ain't doing it to me. I ain't going along with it. I don't care about your guns. I don't care how many weapons you got in my backyard. I got enough to fight you and I can battle all of you for years to come. They ran all of this on the evening news. He let them know I can fight all of you. And they told you can get together, you can gang up, you can do whatever you want. I got enough weaponry, the muscle, the might, and the manpower and hidden allies. China. He let them know I got enough muscle to fight you. Now, I want y'all to understand, treat this like the bully at the high school cafeteria, okay? The bully really can't do nothing to you unless he got all his little henchmen with him. Because in the event you hit him in the mouth and draw blood, that strengthens all the other little children that was around that were afraid of him. So now he need all his henchmen. He don't have to come near you to hit you in the mouth because he got some other dummy that'll go hit you in the mouth, okay? This is the way this is going down, international politics. Meanwhile, it's like the drunk in the bar as the bar fight breaks out. He's so drunk, the chairs are flying, the bottles are breaking, they're fighting, everything is going down. He's so drunk, he ain't got nothing to do with it. He's steady drinking and walking through. He ain't getting hit by no bottles, no chair. Nothing's hitting him, and he's staggering through. And every time he moves or stagger to the left, a chair go right past his head. Or he move this way and stumble and stagger and grab on his drink, and a bottle fly past his face. But nothing hits him. Right now, that's just where I am on a global scale. We're drunk. And we're not paying attention, even though there's a global bar fight taking place. We think we're safe in Yahweh. We think that our spiritual drink has secured us in a way where nothing can happen to us. Do you understand? Let's go further. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father. And was manifested unto us. Okay. This is the same one that wrote the book of John. Okay. You, you, want, you want to put these things together. So that you know and understand who was writing what. I believe it was last evening I was explaining something about culture. The Greeks stole a lot of culture from Africa. And wrote this stuff out and made it sound so beautiful, so peaceful. Oh. <sighs> How do I love thee? Let me count the ways of... Listen, you don't write and perform your poetry and all your real books of learning and knowledge and all that in a state of perpetual warfare. See, in the midst of warfare, you can't do that, okay? Ukraine 
right now, uh, Rutland Beard Flores ain't functioning in Ukraine. Bombs are falling everywhere. You see see how the bombs hit him at the shopping mall? No, sorry, strike that from y'all. Ain't watch the news. But anyway, oh, oh y'all seen that? Okay. So, see, you ain't happy running through a mall shopping. Oh, I gotta get them Nikes. Girl, I ain't worried about them Nikes. I need this new Louis Vuitton. Right now, we don't even say it right. <laughs> but anyway, you're not happy in a state of war. So, they lied about a lot of the knowledge and the things that they increased. If you read anything about this here, particularly First John, you'll notice he does not mention the wars and the different things that had happened because he was now an old man. He was writing to them about the peace in Yahweh, the fellowship and some other things. This was after what you would call AD 70, okay? Or the time of the Roman Emperor. This was after that because he had the time to now admonish people. Pick yourselves up. Do this thing the right way. Let's get together with some clarity with what we do. Because as the latter days approach, we're in the trouble here. See, this is the problem I have with men today that run to preach and teach because they have the book, but have no real knowledge of self in Yahweh, or no knowledge of the history. There is a lot to be known in Yahweh's word to teach a lot of people. Because sometimes people study, and they'll come to the priest and they have some serious questions, Okay. We got to deal with this because when you have the same spirits repeatedly attacking an assembly, it will be a mighty poor shepherd to not see what's going on after a while. Okay? It'd be mighty poor to not see it and not know how to pray against it or have Almighty Yahweh stop it. This is why a lot of times I don't take too kind of the people. It... Hey, let's move on with it. We'll deal with it as it comes up in the Word. That way the Word will deal with it. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have listen to what he says fellowship with us okay where we say fellowship entails it's the equivalent of partnership you have fellowship going right now now for example on the job I'm with, I have young men that I work with. Some of them I'll, I'll sit and eat lunch with. We can talk during lunch break. With them. Then there are times where I'll have a different crew. Some of them I really don't care for their social slash politics. And you'll see me without self-imposed righteousness. But you'll see me ease on away from them. You understand what I'm saying? There was, there was a man, he came. They sent, us, sent him on our site the other day. He came. Oh, big time fornicator. So he walks up to the other big time fornicator. Yeah, man, I did a lot of blank to blank in this neighborhood here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now he got to start reminiscing about what they did. Now, I had a little paperwork to do. Perfect time to get away from them. So I let them two talk about their old reminiscing, simple days. And I eased on the way. The man said, where are you going? I said, I got some paperwork to do. Went on, got in the truck, cranked the motor, turned the air on, and shut the windows. That's how Israel will have to do among all the nations of the world and even among Israel that refuse to do right. You will have to learn how to shut yourself off, not in a state of self-imposed righteousness, but in a state where you look and realize, nah, I cannot have fellowship with you on that level. While you function from that state of mind, I can't do it. And there's going to be some times where you're going to have to say it. I'm going to show you all how to say it, how to word things sometimes where you're not lying, but you in the proper technicalities call it out in a way where you clear yourself. We're going to have to learn stuff like that, okay? We're going to have to stop being what, what we call religious airheads, okay? We, we, we're going to have to stop that. We're going to have to be wise enough as well as powerful enough in Yahweh to know. Yahweh give you the wisdom to speak up for yourselves, okay? You understand? He gave you the wisdom. They were talking about what were they going to do in the job and all this other stuff. And I was leaving out the office yesterday. They told me what was going to take place today and this, that, and other. And the woman was like, well, you got your marching orders. I said, I got my marching orders from heaven. And kept on walking. She said, I, 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 I know that Reverend Ball here. Wow. Reverend. That's what she said to me. Wow. I know that Reverend Ball here. In fact, you need to just shake your hair. I said, well, since we're on that subject matter. I said, it's against my spiritual beliefs for me to shape my head completely bald as a priest. And if by chance I am going bald, then Yahweh made the design in which I'm losing my hair. I said, now you, on the other hand, you cut yours short. You ain't got that much more hair than me. 
If I let mine go for two, three months, I can catch you. I said, but by the way, do you know my wife don't even address my head like that? Don't ever do that to me again. And shut her down. But my point was, don't come talk to me about the Shabbat. I got my marching orders from heaven. And nobody's going to make me do anything against the word of Yahweh. I want you to hear this. That you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Abba and with his son, Yahshua HaMashiach. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Are you hearing this? They're saying, we write this unto you now so that your joy can be, you haven't been happy, but yet. All right, here's a good example. This the holiday weekend. Black folk happy. Because they ain't got work Monday. This the holiday weekend. Now check this out. Because they all know they got to get up Tuesday and go back to work. Now they happy, but yet they don't even know why they happy. You understand? See, the 4th of July is Independence Day for them. Thank you, you have been, don't even know why. You still ain't independent. Thank you. So now, he's saying, these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. See, our joy celebrating American holiday can't possibly be full because it has no connection to the word of Yahweh. Now, he's declaring we have a relationship with Yahweh, a fellowship, where we're required to live a certain way because now our fellowship allows us a partnership. Later on, you'll find the apostles declaring that fellowship slash partnership as part of an heir and joint heir with Hamashiach. Okay? This is a relationship. This ain't a competition. Which is why you have to tell the children of Israel that newly come to this way of life, calm down. You don't know what you think you know. Okay? You got to tell them, calm down. The same Abba that's setting the kingdom up for you is setting it up for me. You are new to it. Calm. This is the era where you can't teach people. This is the era. Where you cannot teach them. L. Johnson called it out. He'd been dead since 98. L. Johnson said years ago, everything come in the door nowadays, come in knowing. Come in knowing more than the preacher know. But he was being sarcastic. I had a brother call me once, Shabbat. He's probably listening right now. He'll call me now after the sermon. He, yeah, you talked about me. Yes, I did. <laughs> he called me and said, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm one of them brothers you talked about that uh, come in and know more than the priest know. I said, really? You, you know more than the priest know? Y'all recall? You already? You, are you a priest? Well, no, but I just, I know. I got... Yeah, I hung up. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. See, one thing. See, let me tell y'all about the phone real quick. How many of y'all own the phone? How many of you pay the bill on the phone? How many of you get to talk to people on the phone, right? How many of you decide who you want to talk to on the phone? Okay, you get the point, right? See, I don't never have a problem hanging up. Don't call me with that nonsense and that foolishness, especially if I answered it in the midst of something. And then you on there with some nonsense. Hey, I give you my word. I pay the bill. So I get to pick and choose who I want to talk to when I want to talk to you. All right, just click up. I hung right up. I wasn't going to entertain that foolishness because I was making a point about sarcasm. And if a chance a man does think that he knows more than the priesthood, here's the rule. If Yahweh didn't call you to preach his word, your knowledge only requires that you obey. You understand? See, our people, they don't think they're set in the house of the Lord. Same spirit on them. Now, they'll say the spirit led them to an assembly of Yahweh. How then, if that is true, does that spirit then command you to rise up and cause problems with the order of Yahweh's house, not the order of the Lord's house, the order of Yahweh's house is already established. So you have the Ruach. And the ones you're going to, they don't. That's what you're saying when you do that. Make sense? Funny how the apostle, now one thing I like about this, 
if you pay attention to Yohanan's writing, he does something a little different than Shaul and Kepha or Peter and Paul. He does something slightly different. If you read, I'm, I'm talking to people now that's analytical. I'm not saying that y'all stupid. I'm saying somebody that's reading and really analytical, not putting their own interpretation, but you let the spirit help you pick up something. Sometimes men are of different personalities. They're of different uh, demeanor or whatever the case may be. So then, you know, that people feel your spirit. Now, he was a little more laid back in the way he addressed specific issues. If you notice, the Apostle Shaul straight out the gate declared his apostleship, right? Peter straight out the gate declared his apostleship. But now, you never catch Yohanan declaring it. He always lets the word of Yahweh do. Not that either two were wrong. It's just, in other words, different demeanor or different points of delivery. Okay? Dawid was the warrior. Shalomo was the one of a peaceful reign. You know, he had to drop a body or two here and there. But he was of a more peaceful reign. Still the same bloodline. You get it? Israel has to know that because it denotes the time frame in which a messenger was addressing Israel in order to get a point across to a frame of reference at that time. You and I are of a frame of reference where we have to be in a hurry to learn it. You have to hurry up and go slow. In other words, run to the house of Yahweh. For the name of Yahweh is a strong tower, and the righteous do have permission to run into it and are saved. Run to it, but when you get there and are in it, now slow down to learn it. Am I making sense? You don't run in and keep running because there's no. How many of y'all ever had children in the house? Especially little bitty children. When they two years old, three years old, you kind of like let them get away with it, right? But then it gets so named, what you say? There you go. Yo, you too big to be running in this house, right? So now we are the children of Yahweh when we run to the house of Yahweh. Now the running stop when you get in the building. The running stop. You don't run up the shepherds. You don't run up the You don't run up the deacons. Sit your ass down. Especially when you ain't got command of your wife. Especially when you ain't got command of your children. Oh? See, that's why I don't like him. In fact, let's put it in their term. They'll say, that's why I don't like his ass. That's fine. That's fine. Only thing I can say is that you, I don't own an ass. I have a ram, but I don't own an ass. All right. Now, we as Jewish people have to really be ready to Deal with the beauty of his word, which a lot of times we're not ready because the word of Yahweh comes in power. And a lot of times people know when they can and cannot flex on you. You hear what I say? I watched something so strange yesterday. It made me laugh all day. My wife said, you should have shot pictures of it. You should have at least filmed it. Training a young man how to do a specific thing on the job. Teach him how to do this. When the trucks come in, you got to get the return ticket from them. You got to sign the time in when he came. He got to get loaded. It takes roughly six minutes, no more than nine to load him, send him out again. You got to write the time he came in, time he leaves out. So I tell the young man, as soon as the truck comes, go straight to the driver, get the ticket so you can get out of the way of the bucket of the excavator so you don't get hit by no brick or concrete. Go up, go back. So I get there. There's this pit bull on the job. This time I got a full crew, everybody there, two young brothers, they feeding the pit bull, seven o'clock in the morning. So I said, whose dog is this? He said, I don't know, it was out here when we came here. Somebody put some dog food right there and the dog just stayed and did this and did that and blah, blah, blah. So okay, all right. Every time the young brother got up, the pit bull got up. The dog stayed all day. So two of the young men, I knocked them off early, they went on home. They were the first to start feeding the dog. But the dog drew to the young man that stayed all day. So every time he got out and went to the truck, the dog went to the truck. So later the day when the truck took its time coming back, young blood sitting in the shade and I'm just observing his behavior and his demeanor. He wouldn't move. But the dog got up every time the truck came back and went to the truck. 
So I say, come here. I say, look, you about to lose your job. I'm going up the office. I'm going to get a hard hat and the vest for that dog. Because that dog is doing what you should be doing. I tell you, when the truck comes back, go immediately get the return ticket. Note the time he came in. And then wait till he leaves. And note the time that he leaves. The dog did it all day. 15 loads in and out. 13 times the dog went to trucks. And every time young blood get out in the street to direct the traffic and stop, the dog was in the street. Wow. Funniest thing I had seen. So I'm thinking to myself, my duty is to teach you, my duty is to train you. I've been training you for a week now, but today I'm not going to tell you what to do. Today I'm going to sit back all day and watch you do it. Because he didn't know that today was evaluation. Well, yesterday was evaluation day. Well, I got it now. Let them know he's capable or he's not capable. Which he's capable. He just got to stay on it. But the point was that the dog knew. You know what I was thinking? I said, see, that's how we fail in obeying Yahweh. Now, I don't know of a nationality get offended by this, but I'm just saying. I'm using us as a dog as, as, an, as an example. If Israel's duty is to obey Yahweh and you got a job to do, you need to do the job. Because, see, when the Gentiles come along and they learn what the duty is and they learn what your job is, like the dog, they're going to get up there and at least try to do the job. It's us. We got to keep on going. We got to find an easy way out. Got to have the homeboy hook up. Got to have the network going. Got to have so much stuff. Sometimes it's not necessary to be in the mix on everything. Okay? We all here on Shabbat. You can have a conversation. 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 Three, four, y'all. And I can go somewhere and sit right down and be looking at something. I don't have to be in the mix of everything that's going on. I'm just not that type of person. And I can love every single one of you and yet not be in a conversation with everybody all day, every day, or every Shabbat. Oh, got everybody number. I'm on the phone with everybody. I'm in the mix of everything. Because see, as soon as something go wrong, and then when y'all would start with building it, and you look back and say, well, Every damn time wickedness or confusion emerge, it's always the same spirit, same bodies, same person, same vessel up in the mix. You might not be the cause of it, you might not be the ignition suit, but in the mix is the sin. You understand? Get in the fellowship. You know, I, don't, I, I don't know if I got everybody here phone number now. Nah, you, uh, hopefully you all have mine. If you need me, you can call me. But I don't always talk to everybody. I mean, even on Shabbat, not being rude or standoffish, but sometimes I can stay. When I'm preaching, I'm talking to all of us. From time to time, I allow you the right to interact with different things. That's all right from time to time. But to be in everything, that, that assembly, this assembly, that assembly, well, that's not the fellowship of Yahweh. The fellowship now is we're receivers of something and we got to get into what we are to receive. He says here, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that Yahweh is light and in him is no darkness at all. Right? So I don't have to manipulate if you're here to fill the gas tank. If you have it in your pocket, then fill the tank and keep it moving. Right? I don't need to be on the phone. I'm talking, I'm using him since he came down out. I don't need to be on the phone talking about Jeremiah to nobody or anything. I, I, I don't have to do it, right? I don't need to be on the phone and, oh man, yeah, let's go up there and get them uh, Pat and Stacey Adams and let's get this, that, and that. Oh, look at her, man. She is something else. Mm. Oh, yeah, what well, like I was saying. You understand? We don't have to live that way. And yet, as Israel, your life can be so perfectly beautiful in Yahshua that it is boring to the world. Yes. You hear what I say? It's boring to the world. Leaving out the office yesterday, the old woman there said the test, she says to me, what time is the cookout starting? So I said, I don't know about no cookout, but I can tell you what time I'll probably be waking up. Because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to get some good rest. I ain't going to no cookout. Understand? I don't mean, I, I, cookout for what? We just, uh, now look, you, you, remember, we, remember we held the feast day and we cooked the food 
and and the self righteous Israelites jumped on the channel. Oh, y'all was cooking. He was doing this. He was doing it. And now, now, when I asked the woman about the burnt offering that the priest cooked every Shabbat day, is what the word says. She ain't know nothing about that. Didn't know nothing about it. But you thought you were condemning us. Oh, you're polluted off of your this and your that and the other. So I'm nosy. I go on her social media page and I look at her. First thing I saw, her, her three babies, beautiful little children. But I saw a picture after picture after picture. Her and her babies. Her or her babies. And no man. Now, I ain't saying that the man couldn't be behind the camera taking some of the pictures. Some of them were selfies. You can see that. You know You know when it's a selfie. You see, you see the sleeve in the picture. And all. You, you go, okay, don't play. But my point was, how do you rise up against the priesthood and seek to rebuke and chastise them as the congregation when it is necessary that the word of Yahweh be preached to Israel first? He put forth the shepherds, the priests, the apostles last. As it were, appointed unto death. Because you are the sheep. You are most important. You are vital. And you go against your own priesthood. See, if you study us close, only black folk do that. Only black folk go at their leadership hot and heavy, tooth and nail, 24-7. Only black folk do that. Now, for all you new white folk on the channel, don't you get too happy at home rejoicing. Let's let something be known. They do that because they are the children of Israel. Those are the same characteristics of the Israelites in the scriptures. Okay, they went at Moshe hot and heavy. If you watch white folk, a lot of times you don't even understand when white folk fighting among themselves. You, you, we don't understand when they fighting. You understand? Yeah, we yeah we saw we saw white folk going at it. And they were real smooth. They, 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 never, never raised a voice. We saw a couple having an argument, husband and wife. It was the smoothest, most civil argument ever going. It was, oh, so such a thing not going to do this, that, that. I'm not such a thing as that. I'm not such a thing as that. Now I'm sitting right here on the bench. My arm around my Shaw. She's sitting right there on the bench. He's standing right there. Got the baby in his throat. They fussing. Smooth. Now it wouldn't have been us. Now y'all laughing because you know it's true. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know it. Yes, sir. Yeah, when he said what he said, he walked away. Went on smooth. Well, me and the children are going to enjoy our day. And she sat on the bench sulking. You know, me, I'm nosy. So then I kind of like. <laughs> I looked at her. I looked at my shop. I was like, Did you see that? We never said that. We just looked at each other. Our eyes was like, Did you see that? Her eyes was like, Yes, I saw that. And I was like, Oh. <laughs> and I'm nosy. So I got that last peep in. <laughs> so I said, Let's go. But we read it. Wow. All nations. We're going to have to learn this. We're going to have to learn this. But don't nobody want to tell it to us. White folks are joining this channel. Let's be clear. They join to, They ain't joining the channel because they're looking for something to talk about. They join the channel because they know, okay, that one is preaching some truth. And he don't play with the way he delivered. Because see, they think they know everything. But when they run across somebody in Yahweh with some short enough power, they look up and realize, one day, we're going to have to get in line with one even greater than that one. And that is Yahshua. So no, we don't disrespect. We welcome you. But I warn you. Don't come over here with that racism 101. Because you got a shepherd of Yahweh here that is an expert swordsman in the word. And I will draw it on you. I won't play. We show love and honor, all of that. People accuse you as soon as you set people straight. They will accuse you of not showing love because you won't be manipulated. That's all right. 
But it is the power of Yahweh when he tells Israel, be not partaking in another man's sins. You got to know how to keep yourselves. I've had many men walk out on us. It makes no difference to me. Y'all will keep us here no matter what. He kept the little doors open and made the blessings of Abba Yah dwell and rest upon his people. Hallelujah. Yeah. I signaled a man in y'all the other day. I saw him. He saw me. I blew the horn. I, hey, I'm, I, I wanted to see. He saw me and went the other way. I, I accepted it and kept on going. I, 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 hey, it is what it is. But I'm not afraid to say it. I've learned over the years from my father and the elders to speak the truth. In fact, early in the week as I was studying, look at this, I made this note, right? Check this out. I truly miss Elder Johnson because now that he's gone, I can reflect back on so many wonderful things that he taught right out of the world. Did you hear what I said? I miss him because I got so much I can reflect back on that he taught right out of the world. This is my thought. Today, everyone is in such a hurry to do something that they don't even realize that they have nothing to reflect back upon. See, if you're newly converting right now and you don't have the word, you don't remember a generation of elders in your lifetime, that's not disrespectful to you. You thank y'all, but nevertheless, you have now come to the knowledge of it. A brother wrote me a letter, and he it was, it was, it was a, a, a sweet reminder. It wasn't a rebuke, but the brother said, that the way you bring up Elder Johnson, Elder Shul, and Elder Jones, and you remember them, he said, one day, some of us are going to have to bring you up in the same manner. And I have never thought of it that way. He said, you too going to have to be listed in Yahweh's name one day as one of the great ones among Israel. Now, when I lifted myself up, I say, I've had so many problems out of men just trying to do right, but I don't back up off of men, especially when they're wrong, because you ain't going to make me change the order of Yahweh's house. You ain't going to make me change nothing in the book. You ain't going to make me back up off the word. Not one inch. I'm not going to back up. So I noted it. When you go to Malachi 3, They have nothing to look back on. But when you go before the presence of the shepherds of Yahweh, you want to take them. You think you can take them. You think you can challenge them. Yahweh didn't set, set the shepherds up for you to take them. I'm going to challenge them. I'm going to go at them. I'm gonna, he didn't set you up. And some of them, he warned you, he bears not the sword in vain. As soon as the shepherd of Yahweh draw the sword, y'all's only defense. You didn't show love. You didn't show love. Malachi 3 6. Listen to this. For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of your cobra are not consumed. Even from the days of your father, you have gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says Yahweh of hosts. But you said, How shall we return? question how you gonna return to that which you've never been to you hear what I say so when we awaken and we come to the knowledge of Yahweh we're the ones now that are required to be so humble in how we walk because we don't have the way before us we're learning it and it's being laid that's why Yahweh always reminded Israel Remember now the days of your fathers. He reminded Israel. See, Israelites today, they just waking up. They happy to have something to be talking about. And then in our Israelite ways, we become Michael Jackson in all our arrogance. We do. That's a, we want the world to know we Israelite. Remember Michael did that in the video? That's up. We want the world to see we Israel. Then you really think you Michael Now you want the wind blowing And blowing your hair like mine You ain't got none Oh no We need to serve Yahweh And just be so glad That he touched us And called us We can't even be happy in that You hear what I'm saying We can't even be happy In that the boss, the owner of the company called me the other day. We in class. So I texted him. I said, I'm down here in the training class y'all sent us to. I'll call you back soon. I'll get a chance. He texted right back. Oh, I forgot. 
So when we leave, we go to lunch. I got the superintendent. He's with me now. This is funny. He, he, I told him what he knows. He's the superintendent. He owed me. This is funny. It's all right. Boss calls. I'm telling him, yeah, we're going down here. We're going to get a little lunch. He's with me now. Blah, blah, blah. He won't speak the phone. He's with me now. Just that quick. He forgot. So he says, yeah, on Tuesday, I'm sending my son out in the field. I'm going to send him with you. I don't want to send him with that nutcase because he got a whole lot of stuff going on. And I don't want him with you, with nobody but you. You're the best of the best. And I want him with you. He's like, what? You don't want him with me? What you mean? I'm a nut. I got a little, oh, no, I forgot you was even there. Which I don't think he forgot. But he was saying in so many words, I'm putting my child in your hands because I know you're the best and that you can train him well. The man took offense to that because he wouldn't put him with him. This is a young man that's one day going to probably own it. If y'all would let those stand in long enough, just like he got it from his daddy, this young man will eventually get it from his daddy. So then he wants somebody to know all about it, ins and outs, to start training him. That's fine. But what I thought about when that happened was, that's what Yahweh does for the shepherds and for the nation. He sends the nation to his shepherds. He sends the people to those shepherds, wherever they are, wherever Yahweh sent you to a shepherd, the state that you were in, he sent you at that state and at that time to the best that could feed you. How do you outgrow it when you haven't eaten? You know what I'm saying? I always give him a little grandson. He loves to talk. I, I can't be in the house when he's eating because he's distracted now. He's Papa. So I got to say five or six times, eat your food. You got to grow. You, I, Papa, big strong man will be like Papa. I said, well, then you got to eat. Little man, you got to eat. I always tease him, you got to eat. Okay. Yes, I am. We got to eat. Don't get caught trying to worship and over honor your leadership. We're servants of Yahweh. And we are your servant. We are fellow helpers. Join heirs. Let me throw it out there again. We're just fellow helpers, right? So you teach the people. Unlike men today, they want everybody to see them, to know them, to honor them, to worship them. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. It ain't about him, them, us. It's about Yahshua. He's the one that's going to rule this earth. And we want to fight for a slot. It's the musical chance, y'all. It's all over the earth. It's the spiritual thing. And if you're going to make it in and you're getting down to the end and it's you getting the kid versus the sinner, I'm sorry. With all due respect, this is the best way I can teach you to. Smash the chair. You understand? You're trying to make it in. Hey, grab the chair. He on the opposite of the chair when the music stops. He sit down. He ain't kept the same command. He said, you stand. Spin the chair. You all get that. Yeah. Spiritual musical cheers come. Our children today, we're not moved by the Torah of Yahweh. When I was. Yeah. No, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to put y'all to the test. Look, look, young brothers, don't y'all get offended, but this is true. When I was six and seven years old, I knew the 23rd Psalm by heart, okay? By the time I was 10 and 12 years old, we knew the 91st Psalm. We knew the 150th Psalm. We knew different things because Mother Shula had us in the most children's Bible study classes, taught us this stuff. We were so motivated, so excited by it. We knew that these were prayers that at times when children pick on you in the school, you had to open up your Bible and pray. Now, you might not have had a Bible in school. Which when you get home, you tell your parent what you went through, how rough your day was. Your parent coached you. They guided you through prayer. They taught you certain things because everything wasn't this. But you knew how to pray. Young men today, they ain't interested in no prayer. By sure hands, young men, how many of you can lead prayer right now? You sure? I'm going to test you later on. I'm not going to play. I'm going to test you. Your hand up. We're going to see. Because you're supposed to know some of this stuff. And if you didn't raise your hand or you know you really can't pray at 10 and above, shame on you. The way that we're going forth from this pulpit, the way that children's class was going on here and all. Come on, man. Listen, children. Y'all want to hear something funny? The children's Bible class was so interesting. Even the adults was getting jealous of the children's class. Then tell me it didn't happen. Adults wanted to be in the children's Bible class. Adults wanted to take over the children's Bible class. What? <laughs> so y'all supposed to know. You supposed to be locked in. My father didn't play that. 
man, for you went to bed every night, he's standing right there. I knew that. Say you pray. He was over us. We said our prayers. And you better know how to pray. Being a preacher, son, you better know. Please. We play too much today in this lifetime. New converts that are fully, that haven't, pardon me, new converts that haven't fully repented have nothing to fall back on. They can only look to newer and newer things and never find the old paths because they hear nothing and no one. That was the note y'all gave to me. The new convert, they don't have nothing to look back on. Now, anytime you sit under Elder Johnson, any messengers of Yahweh in the 21st century, and you get above them now, but this way you got your start in the shepherds. Mr. Uh, Yaka L. I'm trying to think of some different elders here in the city of Baltimore. I'm trying to think. Uh, Pastor Michael. Any, any, I'm, I'm going to give all the ministers that I think of. Elder Roberts. Uh, Elder Beard. Anybody. All of them. Contemporary men. When you go off away from them and go other places what happened, and then you can't reflect back on nothing you learn from them, don't always blame the shepherds now. Because some of them are laboring so hard. Young brothers want to run before the time. And then when you fail and get out there and realize you ain't got no power, it's on you because you didn't hear. Brother Mike brought up an elder, a, a, a woman brought to the assembly of Yahweh down D.C. She was blind and needed prayer. And we prayed for her. He said she can see that's all I can say. Hallelujah. Anybody doubt me, you call Elder Owens. He says she can see. That's the bottom line on that. We ain't running around bragging and oh, hey, power. That's not how it's done. We really got to go before Yahweh with a sincere heart and a prayerful mind. Scripture said, lay hands suddenly on no man. You don't always just immediately anoint everybody and pray. Same thing with baptism. People got offended because I wouldn't baptize them. I had a man here wanted to get baptized, but I picked up on his spirit. You, you, you're like a, a person. Possessed with an evil spirit. Let's explain this real quick and move on. Most of us don't understand how evil spirits work. Okay, because you think that everybody that you meet in the world is functioning on the level that you think you're functioning on. What I mean by that is, if you think you're righteous, if you think you're sincere, most of the time when we meet people in the name, we think that that's how they are too. Sometimes some of these people are possessed with the spirits of fallen angels. Or manipulative demons. We remember what the scripture says to you in Daniel 11.32. In the latter days when that evil thing rises up and the system is in place. It says that some of us that believe in Yahweh shall fall. Others it says they shall cling to you with flatteries. Mm -hmm. Oh you is great. Oh you this that and that. It's really. I just went over last Shabbat. We have to be paying attention to the type of spirit that walks up on us and presents itself. Okay. You have to be paying attention. You got to be praying. Well, I know, yes, well, we make the mistake of thinking everybody's real, but they're not. So a brother wanted to get baptized. But I wasn't led to baptize him yet because you could feel that this man ain't repenting. This man ain't ready for nothing. This man just run his mouth. So we gave people the calendar, the feast days, and all the other stuff on it. We had all the feast days on the calendar. Because it wasn't on there listed in the word that he got listed in there. He started condemning the count. I don't see first fruits on here. So all of us that knew and understood, we just stood there and looked at it. So then I said, I don't know what you're looking at. It's on there as far as I see. And I walked away. So then I'm out preaching one Shabbat. This has happened repeatedly. Year after year after year. I can always tell when hell going to break out in the assembly on a Shabbat. Because I will wake up on Shabbat morning. With an extremely terrible headache. I could always go. This went on for year after year after year. I knew a brother. He was just terrible. Whenever he was going to pop off. I get up that morning. I had a terrible headache. Next thing you know. He had a dilemma. Had to, His problem had to override the whole assembly. All, time after time. I'm up preaching that day. And I mentioned it to the assembly. And I think it's on the channel if I'm mistaken. I mentioned it to the assembly. I said I have to. Terrible headache. I said, now all we go. No sooner than I said it, the door opened, boom. The poor fella came in. As soon as he came in, yeah, I relieved me of the headache. I started paying attention. I realized, see, that ain't nobody you want to baptize. See, you don't want to put your hands to baptizing the devil. 
Yisrael, when you get baptized, you go down in the water. First and foremost, it is imperative that you be sincere, that you want to be baptized, that you want to receive the gift of everlasting life, that you want your sins wiped away. You don't just want to get dumped for sake of getting dumped because you've done nothing but went down into the water, a dry devil, and you came back up a soaking wet devil. You don't want to do that. Somebody got to preach the word up out of us. Got to preach that evil out of us. And they don't like when the messenger of Yahweh go hard with the word. They think everybody going to be soft in general. So everybody ain't going to be soft. Everybody ain't going to come soft now, okay? Y'all sure asked them, who you thought you was coming out here to see? You looking for some man in soft, Raymond? That's what they looking for. Somebody out in the wilderness. Can you imagine that? He out in the wilderness with all this fine stuff. Mm -hmm. Robe just blowing, you know, just the whole theme music from the, the violin, <laughs> the wind blowing perfectly so that it look, look like this cape in the wind. Come on, y'all, so you all come out here to see. John had a, a raiment of camel's hair, that's what he was dressed in, and his little beard, he looked a little rough. People couldn't take that. They want all the messages y'all be handsome and clean shaven, soft spoken. Shalom, children, praise Yahweh. But the moment you raise your voice, you sound like you mean something now. They, I don't like him. Or as I said, they say earlier, their favorite expression, I don't like his ass. That's all right, you don't have to. It's all right. But I have to love you enough to tell you the truth. I yeah. So let me see if I got this straight. Jeremiah 6 8. Watch this now because when I mention why I miss Elder Johnson and I bring it up a lot of times because he was teaching things and I've seen the poor little people do the same thing. He gave the little man hell. So I thank Yahweh for my enemies when they rise up against me, even when they hate me or go against me because Yahshua said it best. He said, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. For so did their fathers unto the false prophet. So, yeah, when everybody praising you and looking up and lifting you up, and all, you better get scared. You better know for certain, all right, now I ain't preached something. Something I said was a lie because it didn't convict them. It didn't hurt them. It didn't get them mad. Elder Johnson would preach things. I'm a young man. I have been out in the world a couple times in the club life and seen what it was like and never fit in. I never really did fit in, all right? You hear me? I never really did for this. I still can't dance to this day. Now I'm dancing in y'all's house. It's funny how he give me rhythm then. Well, I was in that club industry. I had two left feet. Ain't fit in in no club. Didn't uh, John give them preach on that and rebuke that spirit. <laughs> he ain't mad. Because he told the truth. But when you get right, when you acknowledge that you were wrong, ain't no greater feeling. Then that relief, because now that sin come up off of you because you know, I can't go back and do that. That's when you're starting to walk in the fellowship. Are you hearing me? Yes, Jeremiah 6, 8. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from you, lest I make you desolate, a land not inhabited. Did it happen? Yes, All right, it happened. Thus saith Yahweh hosts. They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape, a, grape, a grape gatherer into the baskets. In other words, they're going to run through you. They're going to show and tear y'all down. So he said, get yourself together. Turn back from your sin. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. So y'all was asking Israel, well, who am I going to speak to to speak to you that you might hear it? Because you don't want the shepherds to say it. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of Yahweh is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. That's why a lot of times people get mad at me and walk off on me and then blame me. Why? How do you blame me for striving? If I got to do it, why do you not have to do it? You get mad with the word saying, we all got to do this. And Israel, I say this to you all. Next time somebody's accusing a shepherd or an elder of anything, this is how you shut them down. You don't have to defend the shepherd, me or any other minister. Anyway. You don't have to defend them. Say to them, no, no, go to them directly. 
Do what the scripture says. You got a matter against your brother? Go to him. Don't bring it to me. Go to your brother. Now, I'm not going to receive this accusation against an elder. Go get two or three witnesses. And then let's go to that elder. Or let's go before that congregation. Don't do it in private. Because that's a lie. And it is a violation of the law. See how you're supposed to live? See, see, we think the law is just about being able to quote stuff. No, no, no. The law is about how you live this thing. It's how you live. See, a lot of times, word of mouth, people people get destroyed by just somebody saying something. Well, if I was you, I wouldn't even mess with him. If I was you, well, see that? When you say those words, then that gets in the person's soul. Because now they're trying to get in your shoes. If I were you. So now, you, you thinking, if you were me, you wouldn't do it. But you are not me. I'm trying to make it in. Okay, I made a mistake in feeding into that. Okay, now I won't do that. I'll do what the word said. See how it's an application of the law? You can't always just go read the law. Now you read it and then you have to apply it. See, reading it to the person ain't going to do no good. Now you got to apply it. That's how you know you ain't you ain't up to par with y'all because you got to be able to apply the law. You see what I'm saying? You walk through Macy's, I mentioned the other. You ain't steal nothing. The alarm ain't go off. You going on to your car. You know why? You know you applied the law. You did not steal, right? All right. You ain't got to uh, go in and get at the cash for us. Uh, wait a minute. I'll be right back. Cashier looking at you. It's not a you crazy thing. You done run out to the car, flip into the Bible, read Exodus chapter 20. <laughs> okay. All right, boom. Let me go back in and pick my stuff. <laughs> Now, 70 people in the line when you left. Then you just come back. Now, it's 92. Sorry, y'all. Had to read the law. That would be foolish, wouldn't it? You have to live this. You don't have to run and read the book that says men are to always pray and not to think. You go, whoo, child, I almost paid it. Good thing I read that. No, no, no. You are to always pray. So then you're applying it. That is a commandment keeper. It ain't somebody just sitting out reading the book. And then the word thus saith the word of Yahweh. See that's why the white people run into this channel now. They know they don't have it. And y'all don't get mad at me for saying it. Come on. Y'all know how y'all do. You'll get right there. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? I was in class the other day. Two of the funniest things happened to me. One man spoke. The white man had his little Fu Manchu beard around his mouth. You couldn't even tell him he was talking because his mustache covered his mouth. So you really couldn't tell he was the one talking. So not only could you not know it was him talking, but anytime he talked, he sounded like a commercial. Yes. He's talking about to do well, according to federal federal code regulations. So I'm like, who's talking? And I'm sitting in the position where I gotta view the whole room. So I'm like, who's talking? So now, not only do I not know who's talking, but his voice sounds like a TV commercial. This little racist white man, he looking at me like he got total hatred and disdain for me when I get out the truck to go into the class. So he's looking at me. And I said to myself, I got to get a picture of him because he looks like somebody. And as soon as I figure out who it is that he looks like, I'm going to ask the question. <laughs> So I, I, I'm going to show y'all this picture later on because when I figured out who he looked like after hating me, I wondered, okay, well, who did I look like to him that he looked at me so hardcore? Anyway, my point is, I don't know what I look like to him, but he looked like Andy Dufresne from Shawshank Redemption. Remember the little man? So I shot the picture of the man because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Right now, I got one witness. 
Can you step up here? Look at this picture. And remember the movie Shaw Shank Redemption? Oh, yeah, that's him. I rest my case. I'll show y'all the picture later. He looked just like the little man that dug out and escaped in the movie Shawshank Redemption. That was the friend to Morgan Freeman. So I'm thinking to myself, wow, I'm down here with celebrities. They taking this class too on that stuff and all that stuff. But you could tell he did not like black people. We ain't done nothing to him, but he just looked at us with such disdain. So when the class and everything was over with, have a nice day, guys. Mm -hmm. I ain't hold my mouth. Thank you. I ain't give no place to the devil. I just I ain't, I ain't hold my mouth. That racial hatred and tension and animosity prohibits fellowship. Right. When they come in under us, according to Yahweh's word, we have to deal with. Now I suggest any symptoms anyway, you will have to get control of. Man. I'm, I'm be bold on that because they'll come in and over talk you and, and get the instructing you on. No, no, no. So look, sit down, sit down real quick. If we got some chains in the back, I'm telling you, sit down. We will bring them prophecies to pass earlier than expected. So sit down. Brace yourself. I, I'm just being real. Because the scripture does say that great men shall come over unto you, bowing and bending and in chains. So don't play with all the Johnsons. You can type out your little racist comments or what have you, or whatever it is. Then you can jump off channel the blocks or whatever. I'm still going to put the response up because we are not here to play. The truth of Yahweh's word has to go forth to the whole world. Yeah. You've taken the whole world into captivity. You have not taken us in fellowship. You've taken everyone into captivity. And the way you taught us the laws in Jesus Christ and in Christianity, you got us acting downright foolish. We're just like y'all now. We don't know Yahweh's word. That's our fundamental problem. This is our culture. This is a way that we are commanded to live. Let's go further. Yahweh says, Therefore, I'm full of the fury of Yahweh. I am really of holding it in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken. The age with him that is full of days. See how y'all was working it? The old man with the baby. The baby got plenty of days ahead of him. He says, I'll kill them all. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, says Yahweh. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given unto covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone did it falsely. That's why we all have to strive. You hear what I say? All of us have to strive. Y'all, we said everybody dealing falsely. That's what those false brethren will do for you. They'll treat you bad, they'll say you're the false brother. They'll lie on you and say you told the lie. They'll do you wrong and say you did it to them. And you know what? In this lifetime, you have to be prepared to take it. Yes, yes I am. You have to be prepared to take it. Remember, you're in an era now. You can't say nothing to people. They want to be saved without having to do anything. Mm -hmm. That's us. That's our generation. We don't want to do nothing. He said, remember the Shabbat? And keep it Kodesh. We think keeping the, 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 the Shabbat, Kodesh. Now you got Hebrew, they smoke reef. And this is their number one argument. Well, it's just an herb, man. Well, why you ain't cooking any of it? You cook a tomato, and that's a fruit. Right? You cook collard greens and mashed potatoes and everything else, but now this herb, you gotta light it up and feel dizzy. Now you all right. Well, if you're gonna say it's a plant and it grow up out the earth, all right, I challenge you now. Let's get some poison ivy. Let's see what happened. Come on, roll it up. Go on to the store. Tell give me two back miles. Let's go over there to Mr. Jones' backyard or wherever it is. Let's chop down some poison ivy. You first. Roll it and smoke it. I want to see it. And see, that's how we think we keep in a Shabbat. They drink, get drunk, lay back, and fight their wives. Shabbat keepers. These are useful like men. This is the stuff going on there. Now, ain't nobody supposed to say nothing about it. Well, L. Johnson's going to say it. L. Johnson's going to bring it up and they ain't going to hold it back. You got to teach your son. You got to prep them, young men. You got to be ready to be men. There are certain manly things young men have to do. Okay? Got to do it. Oh, man. Hey. Anytime a female dog can get on the job, do the job better than a young man, there's a problem. The pit bull was a girl, by the way. Mm -hmm. 
They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people. Slightly saying, Shalom, Shalom. And there is no Shalom. A lot of Hebrews like that. They like to shalom you, but they have war in their heart. No, 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 I know shalom. Brother got mad at me with that one time. He, told me, he saw me out the mall. Told me, shalom, brother. I said, hey, what's up? <laughs> That's right. I threw it right back at him real quick. Hey, what's up? And he called me on it. What, man, no shalom? I ain't say another word. See, I done seen you cause too much hell in the assembly of y'all to shalom you. Yeshua said, when you go into a house, you greet the house. That's what he said. And if there's no shalom there, then let your shalom return unto you. So I kept mine because I knew better. You know, hell raiser. You know, see, that's a, that's a devilish code word for some of us. Notice I said for some of us. Shalom is a devilish code word. Because, see, we want to recognize each other as Hebrew. But you're sending you all over the place. You got so much going on. You're doing so much wrong. How, how is shalom in you? Shalom is when you look up, you glad to see one another. That's the shalom, okay? Yes, Come on, man. You look up and see you. Well, I'm glad to see you. That's a shalom for me because I ain't got nobody. Man, come on. All the people I work around, man, the world, all the stuff people got going on, and then I get a day where I can hang out with the Hebrews. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Come on, man. We don't know how to live, and that's the truth. We don't know. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Hey. They were not ashamed at all. Neither could they bless. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, says Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And what therein? And you shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. So that's why I don't change none of the order of this assembly, the way of Johnson ran it. I ain't changing nothing. People get around. Brother said, well, that's the old house. Like, this the new one. Show me the new one in Yahweh's word. Show me the new house of Israel in Yahweh's word. See, I challenge you when you don't know Yahweh and then swear out that what you know is the one and only right way. The, these brothers today, they all hung up on the lost books. But brothers, the real lost books are the 66 that's right in your face. They have to be lost anytime you don't know enough of them to live by it. Now, in the days of Matt Turner and others, were they running around with the book of Enoch? Were they running around and everyone played? Hey, Matt, look, before we go down in the Jane Town, stop over here, everyone play. I'm going to get this book called Spit Book. If I were a young black man today, Getting kind of old. But if I were a young black man today, I would grab hold of all of my older men, the elders, the older men that I know are sober minded, that are grave, that are truly sincere. I'd grab hold of them men and walk with them as long as I could. I'd sit under them. None of my foolishness, none of my joking and jesting. I'd watch everything that they do. Because one day, they're going to be gone. And if you ain't got no fathers to look at now, if you ain't got no elders to look at now, if you ain't got no brothers to look at now, you got to look at those older men because they're paving the way with the way in which they live, the way in which they walk before you, the way in which they teach you things. Sit down with this young generation today, but don't sit down. You ain't got a bottle of Anacin, Excedrin, or whatever pill that might be that you take, because they're going to give you a headache. I'm telling you right now, they know everything. You hear me? They know everything. They start talking to you about stuff, and it's only the stuff that they know and the stuff they can relate to. It can't feed them. It can't do. Uh, all our young boys, they all think they're going to make it to the NFL or the NBA. All right. Right. Yeah, yeah, rapping, rapping. How did I forget that? Rapping. 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 The latest bubblegum rapper. But look, I grab hold of the young men. Because after they gone, y'all ain't got nothing coming. Y'all hear me? Y'all ain't got nothing coming. You let these old men go. Look around. See them elder men in your room? Gray-haired men, them one? Brothers, look around. And then 
and look at yourselves. Because if you think you're going to learn from each other, <laughs> brothers don't learn nothing from each other. They don't know nothing. Did not our forefathers make that error? Yep. Solomon's son got rid of all the old men that advised his father or were around his father. He surrounded himself with all the new men, all the young men that knew no more than he knew. And in 10 years time, the kingdom was done, kaput, kaplui, out of there. And see, Israel, that's what will happen to the assemblies of y'all, all the younger brothers now. And I'm, when I say younger, 50 and under, coming in, converting, ain't been there nowhere, ain't experienced nothing, ain't never led their family in a dinner, ain't never led their family in evening prayer. Oh, but they want the house of Yahweh. And a lot of time now, 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 this is going to hurt. But a lot of time, y'all be rolling with it. Be all with it. You be all with it. The people belong to Yahweh. And I will humbly say to anybody right now, anybody that left here, you are more than welcome. You are more than free to follow them wherever it is that they say they're going. Okay? L. Johnson ain't got no chain and I ain't locked nobody down. I don't believe in playing. We serve Yahweh. You ain't got to run back, tell nobody nothing I said. Tell them come see me. Okay, don't come see me. I'm man enough to represent Yahweh's word, and I'm not going to back up off of Yahweh's word. I live by this because I know that's what the elders taught. They taught that. Remember the elder mother came here? She said, yeah, I remember that little boy. Those men would go and meet out in the square, Lafayette Square. Elder mother, 80-some years of age, she remembered me as a little boy his age. When my father left out that house. My father ain't leave out in the house without me. I ain't play that. As a child, I admire my dad. And if he went somewhere and I could go, guess what? I was going. If I had to be a stowaway in the back and throw the tire out, I'd be some kid. <coughs> dad, where you going? Can I go? Come on. But he ain't mine. Check your pockets now. Look, you ain't going to have no toys now. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't. Put them toys, they ain't going down there with the men, down with the elders and be looking, listening. And you learn so much. Do you know, there ain't hardly nothing out here I wouldn't pay today to sit down in Lafayette Square and watch them little old men talk the word and go over stuff. You, man, you sit in Lafayette Square today. You might not make it. Not Neighborhoods are just that torn down, just that rough, just that wicked, man. It's so much happening because people have lost sight of Yahweh's word. They don't want to hear the word. People don't want to hear nothing about no Yahweh's word. But they would not walk therein. Verse 16. Listen to this. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore, hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose then cometh to me incense from Sheba and sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. One year we kept the feast, the tabernacle brothers at the feast, they out there rapping. Oh, man. I got up from the table. I said, This is a damn disgrace. You rapping. I ain't pulling no punches. Rapping. Mm -hmm. Feast the tabernacle rappers. Christmas rappers. Make no damn sense, Curtis Blow. Rapping. Mm -hmm. I'm rapping now. Laying Yahweh's word down to it. This is what it's going to take to save us. You think they're going to save you by voting? You think you're going to be saved for a, a damn gun permit? You think you're going to be saved because of a new house or a new car, a new shape? We better renew our mind. Hallelujah. Therefore, I know y'all don't like it. I don't care. Hallelujah. Therefore, thus serve y'all with the whole. I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. You all can hang out with them if you want. Look at what he say. I'll lay stumbling blocks before this people. And the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend. 
shall perish. See, see, that's why Yahweh warned Israel. Stay out of thy neighbor's house, lest he go to hate thee. The Just always over some house. You over here. You always over there. Over. All right, real quick, by show of hands. How many of y'all house I've been to in the last month? Come on, somebody. I've been to your house. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> Every week. Let me jump back over here. <laughs> That's cute, though. <laughs> she said, you've been, you been to my <laughs> Well, it is her. I did buy it for her. <laughs> All right. I ain't going to ask nobody if I got on nobody's nerve. We're going to, not this week. I ain't going through that. All right. So Yahweh says, Stay out of the neighbor's house lest he grow weary of thee. Some translate say weary of thee, some say lest he go to hate thee. Yahshua warned the apostles. Now check this out. He sent us out to go forth and preach and teach and travel, right? I remember when we went uh, to, to Shua community, there were a couple people there that had uh, family members. They lived in the same state or in the same region. So when they came down there, they wanted to spend a little bit of time on the grounds at the shore and then they wanted to go and spend a little bit of time with the family and other things and then they were offended when the other robbers took offense to that at the fact that they were here and there would have you. well hold up now because y'all sure did say wherever you go he did say go not from house to house yep. you understand go not from house to house and I'm going to get into that and I'm going to tell you why he says stuff like that because see you got to understand he gave us some rules to live by some regulation some stuff we really got to deal with so Yahweh says that if we did these things he would lay these stumbling blocks before us and your neighbor and his friend shall perish this is why I keep saying I miss the poor little man because I know that he laid these things out and that we would really have to live by the rules of Yahweh. Let's go to Luke real quick, chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. You you got to catch this. I, I, I'm going with the master any day of the week, as opposed to the student. I'm going with Yahshua as the master. Hallelujah. After these things, Yahshua pointed unto other 70 also, this is Luke 10, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where the he himself would come. Therefore he said unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, Yahweh, of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So there is no harm in teaching men and raising them up, sending them forth to preach. I wouldn't suggest any assembly raise up and just anoint them, give them a, a permit or paperwork to go preach and teach, knowing that they're not ready because you're sending our murderers. You understand? You want to really take the time to ready a man of Yahweh. That's one thing I like about Yahweh's word. L. Johnson did not put any and everybody up or out there. A lot of people came in, challenged the things he was teaching, trying to say stuff. L. John had a different spirit than myself. He stayed real meek with a lot. They stayed real humble. He didn't draw the sword on everybody. But I know before his passing, he did warn me. He said, you're going to have a lot of battles in your lifetime. You're going to have it a lot rougher and a lot harder in the ministry than I did. So you might as well prepare yourself. And that's exactly how he said it. He paused with every word. So you might as well prepare yourself. And I never forgot that conversation. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among the wolves. Carry neither purse nor script, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. You know, some people got to stop and holler. They buy, when we get down here, I'm going to stop out with my whole big house. I'm going to go over here with this one. He's saying, no, 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 no. You're on a mission. You ain't got time for all that lollygag. Now, I want you all to understand what he meant here by now. No purse, no script, no, no shoes, anything. That don't mean go bad for anything like that. He meant, in other words, I'm sending you now, you're going to travel lightly. You're going to travel. I was watching an episode of Personal Adventures years ago, and it was this interesting scene where Mr. Reese had gotten shot, and then the man had to put him up in a hotel and hide and put him in an apartment somewhere, hide and everything. So he fully furnished the apartment. And when Reese went there to live in the apartment, all he had was the clothes on his back. So the man says to him, Well, where are your things? You know, you're going to be here for a while until you recuperate, what have you. He says, where are your things? He says, what things? He says, didn't you pack up anything? Didn't you bring anything with you? He pulled out his gun. He says, well, I travel light. <laughs> that was the only thing he had. Clothes on his back and his gun. Then he put his gun back up. Similar to that in Yahweh, 
you shouldn't mean that oh, look, go broke, be beggars, be eaten over by house, live off of them, do this, that. No, no, no. He meant now, you ain't worrying about no whole bunch of savings. You got travel, you got 10 million travel checks and all this, that. If you were traveling today, you have what's sufficient unto your means. That's the essence of what he means, all right? You don't need a big money bag or money belt and all this other stuff. Remember, uh, Hollywood did it again in a movie called Midnight Run. Uh, Al Pacino had to go, Robert De Niro went to get this criminal, he had to bring him back, he was a big uh, investment banker, he was testifying against the mob, or so he was the bookkeeper, what have you, and they ran out of money. Anyway, the whole time they was traveling, the fugitive that he was bringing back had a money belt with $300,000 in it, right around his waist. But they're in the restaurant, picking, choose between buying a breakfast sandwich, or a pack of cigarettes. But the whole time, the man had 300000 in cash on him. You understand? So y'all sure saying, you ain't got to be traveling, carrying everything you got and all this. You're going to do the work of Yahweh. And Yahweh's work is provided for by the people of Yahweh. Which in that instance, let me stop. And I want to thank the people of Yahweh too who have sent offerings and things to help us. I got a letter up there that mentioned how he sent an offering that the offering might be used to help others in the name of Yahweh and I told y'all for that because that's exactly what we'll be trying to do here and I don't want people to be thinking that we are truest and uh, uh, Bank of America that's, that's not what we're doing we're trying to send the word forth in a way where we help one another we got stuff we're publishing we're doing things in a way we're so low key we ain't worrying about being seen or being noticed it costs money to broadcast brother helped us get some things straight get situated we did all that, got everything in place that we needed, and guess what they did to us? They doubled the cost of broadcasting. And we, nevertheless, in spite of that, we ain't won. We still gonna carry right on. And you know why I don't get upset about it? Because see, it's not my picture on the money. You understand? I, I don't have a problem getting rid of the money, spending my money to do whatever it is I gotta do. Because it ain't my picture on it. See, people that love money, they really love them men that's on that money. They really love that system that the money represents. That's why people gotta have it. <laughs> money, money, money. Just rip and run. My, uh, 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 uh. You better love y'all sure like that. You better love y'all like that. You better love his people like that. You get the point? Let's go on. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say shalom be unto this house. That's first thing you come in shalom. Ain't that how we greet one another? We come in, right? You should all come in in a good spirit. Am I correct? And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again, right? And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they did. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. See how y'all will warn you? Don't be jumping around from house to house. When you go there and you're in a city that's place, go wherever you are received. Stay there till you leave. See how y'all should give a command now? Now, can you run somewhere? Oh God, wait a minute, what does this mean? Because now people will receive you differently. So you was over here with me, then you old snake, now you over there with that one. Oh, oh, you did me. Okay, all right, I got something for you. No, you keep all confusion down. Stay where you are, okay? Stay where you are. And see, that's why Elder felt that way when the sister wanted to go stay with family members outside the world of y'all. Uh, 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 off, off grounds. I was trying to word it properly, wanted to stay off grounds with family members that were not in the name of Yahweh. Well, if it's the feast days and I'm going someplace and I'm around all of Yahweh's people, then I don't want to spend that time with family members that are not in the name of Yahweh. Hey, you see me when you see me. So he had a right to be offended because it is the fellowship of Yahweh. Do you think in the kingdom age we're going to be ripping and running like that? Come on, people don't know the word, okay? So he says, into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Now, that don't mean they throw a ham hock up on the table. You start chowing down, and that ain't what he mean. Hear the sick that are therein, and say unto them, the kingdom of Yahweh is come nigh unto you. If Yahweh give you the ability to preach and teach the word, a lot of people don't know the kingdom message is right there near you. That's your opportunity. And into whatsoever city you enter, there they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, Even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this that the kingdom of Yahweh is come nigh unto you. 
Now you wonder why when people leave and disrespect us or do different things and then left this little gift for that little gift, you try to get that stuff to him and take that with you. Take this with you, the dust of it, I shake off against you. Especially when you know you've done them no harm. You understand? That's now is that the word of Hamashir? Are you reading it? Yes. See, a lot of times people want an excuse, keep on reaching back or looking back. That's like the old level. They back. I'm talking about street world people that they're, they're dating now, right? That um um how you doing? What you want? Um uh um I left some socks here. And so, no, we broke up months ago. Why you back? But well, I'm just wondering if I left my socks on the radiator. Oh, look, I've been through that stuff. Out. Well, can I look around and see you keep coming back? Uh, 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 uh. No, you're gone. Okay? This is the same matter that y'all commands the Israel. We got to know how to apply the law without breaking the law. That's all. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Now, Yahshua said that again later because he reminded them that some of them people going to get up. And condemn this generation because we did worse than those that preceded us. You hear me? See, that's why a lot of times Israel ain't got no excuse. Let's go to Matthew 7 21. Pay attention now. I'm, I'm going to try to break this down as quick as I can. Sisters, if I go a little over, y'all just give me a few minutes, all right? Let's look at this. Matthew chapter 7. Y'all was praying when people need shepherds that's going to teach the word. I ain't standing here trying to preach and make sure every message please everybody. Some of us need ways preached up out of us sometimes. Every message ain't going to make you happy. Every message should save your soul. But every message ain't going to have you smile. You don't see me up here smiling all the time. I know sometimes I say stuff It might be a little calm to make y'all laugh I ain't trying to tell no joke You're, There's nothing funny about the word of y'all If my character just come across it, it, You get the point You, you know that y'all made me laugh on that one That's, that's true though All right. All right. You say no deaf comedy Jan Listen to this This is how serious it is Matthew 7 21 Not everyone that saith unto me Master master shall enter into the kingdom of heaven But he that doeth the will of my abide Which is in heaven Many will say unto me in that day, Master, Master, have you not prophesied in thy name? I had a man tell me that. I'm a prophet. Told another brother, uh, I'm a prophet. Your boy should listen to me. Call me a boy. And when I talked with him about Yahweh's word and banged off on him in the word, he told me, you know I know the word like that. And I said, a prophet that doesn't know the word of Yahweh? But I'm supposed to listen to you. So they say, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name cast out devils? Whoa now. See how powerful the name of Yahweh is? That even at the very name, devils will flee. Hallelujah. That didn't mean Yah was with them. That means his name has credibility in all the universe. Hallelujah. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, stop right there. What were they doing that made him say, you work iniquity? Thank you, Israel. I have taught you the definition of iniquity from the Hebraic definition. And if I haven't broken anything down to you, I've told you that when we look at what iniquity means in the Hebrew, it's genetic. So now you understand. Ask yourself the question, what did they do to cause this to be said unto them? He said, I never knew you, though they were doing it in his name. So then they were not slick. Listen, Elder Johnson said it best. He said, everybody coming in ain't coming in for salvation. Sometimes people are coming in to receive a testimony against their soul. Yes, people can be sincere and searching for the truth and hear it and latch on to it and go therein to hear the word. But then all of a sudden flip and go another way. Yahweh gave them space for repentance to see what was within them for themselves and then they flip out now you got a testimony because the kingdom of Yahweh has come nigh unto you and you rejected it 
So then that puts all of Israel on point. When they look up and realize everybody coming in ain't always Yahweh's people. Now you got to deal with the tares and the wheat because the tares will suppose themselves to be the wheat. Let's break that down. When I say suppose, I mean the tares spiritually are so now out of their mind. They do anything and they think they are the righteous. And you sitting there so humble, so broke down in love. You don't hardly want to lift up your head. You don't hardly talk. You just want to be saved. But they have condemnation exclusively for you when they are the one wrong. Are you hearing how serious the times are? This is why y'all would tell Israel, hold fast that what you have. See that no man take your crown. I done met a many a soul stealer in my day. Men that just want to teach, want to preach, want to have dominion over you. Let's get something straight right now. Everybody look at me. I ain't got no dominion over you. Ain't no chain to hold none of you here. You go, you go. You come, you come. But I ain't got no chain to hold you here. You do not belong to this little man. If you obey him, you belong to Yahweh Shua. You hear what I say? That's why Yahshua got down on him and he let us know there were men coming in that would speak many things to draw away disciples, he said, unto themselves. Mm. And we sit here and read the word every day and then don't even pay no attention. You always got something going, Israel. You always got something up against you. You can never afford to relax. We in the neighborhood the other day. And I like this term that the young brothers use. He put his phone down on the hood of the car. And he walked away a few feet. Then he came back to get it. And as he was getting it, I said, uh -huh, I thought you were going to come back and get it. He said, yeah, I forgot where I'm at. He said, yeah, you got to keep your head on swivel around here. Yeah, it got to be on swivel. And I said, that's exactly right. Now, what swivel mean? Your head got, you got to be looking at all times. You got to be paying attention. He admitted it. You got no way you at. The children of Israel, in dealing with spiritual matters, your head got to be on swivel. Not a Bible head. You got to be looking. Did he tell you? You have to be wise as a serpent. Harmless as the a serpent. Lay right down the grass. He don't say nothing. The grass high. He don't say nothing to you. Till you get too close. Or if you're stupid, like the little white boy. They didn't know copperheads were in Maryland. In fact, Baltimore County. So, look in a little video clip, little white boy, he out in the woods walking with his camera, breathing all hard. <laughs> walking, looking for snakes, right? Now, he's filming as he's walking. True story. Copperhead laying right there on the trail where he was walking here in Baltimore County. And it was what they call a dry bite, where it bit, but it didn't release the venom. It just, he walking and stepped a little too close. So, the copperhead put it in their leg, right? Ah, oh, 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 boy. Oh boy, we said oh boy about 13 times. He kept on, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, this is not good, this is not good, oh boy, oh boy, could you get the park ranger for me? Uh, but he's filming the whole time. I said, see how nervy these people are? Here you about to die. And you still got to be adventurous, got to be filming, and got to... Crazy. So anyway, park ranger come and they, they see the snake. The snake didn't leave. That, this is the part I like about the snake. The snake was tough. He stayed there. He's like, yeah, I got to see this. Yeah, what's up? You think you're getting ready to die? I ain't releasing no poor. I'm going to sit there and watch you. I'm going to see what's happening. So they, you know, the snake didn't go nowhere. So he told them about the snake. Yeah, oh, no, uh, uh, ooh, uh. He think he can make die, breathing all hard and everything. And the range of them come to him, lay down. If you think you can, lay down. And they get a bucket, put the bucket over the snake. She says, congratulations. You're the first person in Baltimore County to be bitten by a copperhead. Wow. Why would they really appear in this region? Nigga, this way. Yeah, she said they had one there at the, at the park or something on display in the cage. Uh, yeah, maybe he just went out for a little walk or, or a little slither. I'll be back. I'm going to go for a slither real quick. So anyway, he got bit. Looking for snakes. Got bit by one. Okay. Snake was trying to take. Hey, man, you're too close. So if he was wise enough to bite, then stay there. He, he wanted to see what was going to happen now. He thinking, <laughs> I, ain't even, I ain't even putting no poison. I said, you that guy. I got to see this. And the snake stayed there and waited. 
You can tell he wasn't the brother snake. He was the white snake. Because that been the brother, he'd have ran ahead. You know, anyway, y'all yeah. get that one later. So, now, y'all sure, if we look at Luke, I ain't even going there. Luke 13. Yes, I am going there. Let me go to Luke 13, 22 real quick so I can clear why he said this to them. Luke 13, 22. Real quick, listen. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Master, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and have shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Master, Master, open unto us. And he shall answer, saying to you, I know you not from where you are. Then shall you begin to say, We've eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast and has taught in thy streets. And thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not from where you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. These were people that obviously had knowledge of it, should have been doing it, should have been keeping it, but obviously whatever they were doing, it was sin. And it was so deeply ingrained within them that it was a part of their genetic makeup. Did he not say he's going to send the Malachim and they know everyone that are his? So now if he's telling this one, I don't know you, you are a work of iniquity, you are not of the proper lineage. This is a spiritual thing. It is within you. Are you hearing me? There should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why would they be weeping and gnashing of teeth? Because they're disappointed that they did not make it in. And when you shall see Abraham and Yitzhak and Yakob and all the prophets in the kingdom of Yahweh and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of Yahweh. And behold, they are last which shall be first. And they are first which shall be last. Ain't that how people do the priesthood today? Preachers run around, they want to be first and do everything, want to be recognized by the Well, here, if you notice, we 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 be last. We gotta make sure that all the sheep make it in. He bring us in. We don't get the land and all that stuff. Y'all get a full inheritance. We live with Yahshua. These are all the things that he's gonna baruch us to do. These brothers trying to get it all done and get it done in their lifetime. That's not Yahweh's will. So you see, obviously, somebody somewhere was doing something that they should not have done. Let's go back to 1 John real quick. Now remember, he's telling us about the benefits, right? This then is the message which we have heard, 1 John 1, 5, of him. And declare unto you that Yahweh is light, and in him is no darkness at all. See, if Yahweh is light and he's in you, you're not going to do the works of darkness. You're going to strive for righteousness. And even knowing that we are capable of sinning, you're not going to sin intentionally and or willfully and then get stubborn about it. Right. Scripture says if we say we have no sin, we call him a liar. Right? So when people are flagrantly violating the law, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, you got to defend the law. That's why I tell you all, you ain't got, I don't want to have nobody bringing an accusation against me. Don't defend me. Defend the law. Hallelujah. Tell them, well, let's go to the elder. Let's bring the evidence of what it is you got. Let's do it that way. All this, I receive a gossip and this, that. That's not the law. Yeah. Same thing with your brother. You got problems among yourself. You're supposed to be able to resolve that. You hear what I say? You're supposed to be able to resolve that. A lot of times we can't resolve because our ego's getting away. We want to be in charge of stuff that we know. Everybody want to be. I know, brother, I work like that. Listen, he's my boy. He's superintendent. He needs all the power that there is. And I sat back for years and watched him accumulate all the power. And this is the funny thing about having all the power. It's killing him. Because the phone be ringing. He got to be so many different places. He got to do this and got to do that. And I always be cool with everything I got to do. To develop a network and a relationship with people. I ain't trying to do nobody wrong. I ain't trying to do nobody harm. I ain't saying I'm better than him. I'm saying it's the law of Yahweh that sustains me because I learned even in dealing with people that are not Yahweh's children, you have to conduct yourself according to the law of Yahweh. You got to be fair. You got to be just. The scripture says, He that rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of Yahweh. I got everything that's under my command. To know and understand, he gonna do fair by me. He gonna do right by me. He gonna be just. He gonna do. You have to do it that way. It ain't about a power play. It ain't about a power struggle. It's about obeying Yahweh. Hallelujah. We have to admit some stuff as black folk. 
And you're going to have to miss some stuff as white folk. White folks have had all the power and they used to being in charge of everything. Now the stuff is breaking down on them and they really don't know how to do it. They can't handle it yet. That They're losing control. Here we are, some of us, we know we're the children of Israel and we know that we're scheduled to come to power. We ain't coming to power any kind of way. We're going to have to be clean. Right now, all the brothers just happy to be Hebrews, thinking we're going to just run everybody and rule the world. Oh, now, we got to learn righteousness. We got to learn how to rule. Am I making sense yet? You think y'all sure going to be wicked and unjust, ruling, doing what Bush and all them do? Go down there and cut that deal. Shut that car and we go damn off. And reroute all that water this way. And that water's going to create generation of electricity. We're going to make all the money. More money, more money. Well, come on over here, Paul and Peter. We're going to get it. No. We don't understand. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have, listen, fellowship. One with another. Now see how it gets into common ground now? And the blood of Yahshua, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Not no little bit. He said from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. That's why I say when the people walked out and left us here, and, all, and uh, I'm the one at fault for trying, for striving. But yet nobody came to me. Anything. I learned all this other stupid stuff through rumor mill and all this other stuff. No, you're supposed to go to an elder with that. Right. And then the scripture say, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. But when you got this young, thagified generation who came up with no fathers, they do not know how to address another man. They cannot do it. That's why our boys are sissified to this day. You hear what I'm saying? They're sissified because we don't. Come on, I deal with them all day, every day. Young brother, I come to work with his slippers on. I said, man, look, let me show you something about show you something about life real quick. I said, don't come on this job site. Take your slippers off, put your boots on. Put them boots on when you come about that house in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Well, can I leave more? No, I don't want them on my truck. I don't want nobody thinking they're my slippers. Put your shoes. Now, I got I got a pair of shoes in the truck. One day we worked, I was near some asphalt. The blacktop, whatever it is. And it got on the bottom of my boot. I came in the house. And I walked over her car. But I took about eight or ten steps. I was so hurt. My daughter said, Daddy, 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 stop, stop, stop. You got something on your shoes. By then I looked back, I took about eight or ten steps, and that little tar was on the carpet. I was so hurt. Because I counted, it's her house. And I brought that tar. So what I do now, I keep a pair of shoes. And as soon as I've done at the end of my day, I take them boots off and I put on a shoe. Not a slipper. A shoe. And then I go in the house. But our young men today, they got slippers on, they soft. They need a pillow when they drive in the car, all of this stuff. Wait, man, you got some soft men, and y'all wonder why the sisters ain't married. They're not rejecting marriage. They just look up and say, goodness grief. He drive, he got a pillow under his butt. I drive my car, I don't even have a pillow for my butt. That's the men. They, they, they want their nails done. Uh, hey, true. I was up on Don Mall a couple years ago. I seen a brother there in the thing getting his nails done. I'm walking. <laughs> uh, back straight. Hey! Him. What's up, DJ? My guy asked what I wanted him. What's up? <laughs> then I just kept on walking. He ain't getting his nails done. <laughs> my nails get done a couple times a day. When I brush my hand, that's that. Now let's get done. <laughs> Lee, press on. Snoop Dogg and all them, they getting the nails. You ever see them drinking? I know, bro, he be drinking like that. He in the simple. Pinky finger up in the air. Oh, you ain't see it? I'm going to leave you where you at. That's all right. I ain't going to disrespect nobody. I, I know what I saw. We have to learn how, as men, to conduct ourselves before Yahweh. And I ain't saying nothing that I can't say to the man's face. I'm saying what I'm saying. I ain't never seen my father drinking that big all up in the air. Oh, long ass fingernails. Be done scratched the moon out the sky. Make no sense. You grow up, you're going to be men, big men. 
I don't need to open nail work there at all. You don't need no fingernails. Nails longer than your wife. She ought to put you out. We gone crazy. This is a crazy generation. Just crazy as they want to be. The women hard. So, and the brother saw nothing. Wow. Y'all know it's true. Please, that's how it is right now. You talk to the women. You, you, I called an office the other day. Talk to the woman at the office. She sound like Bud White. So when you send them out there in those field, we got those trucks. I said, well, I'll come up there and get the rest of the tickets because the truck driver didn't get them. Yeah, well, he's on another route, so he did leave me here. Just come in there at the front desk and get them from me. I said, all right, well, when I get there, and just who do I ask for? Uh, I'm at the front desk. You're going to ask for nobody. So I thought I was talking to a brother. <laughs> I get there. Hey, David Johnson, I'm here to pick up tickets. Truck driver number six and six left. Uh, brother said, come here at the front desk and get him. Ain't no brother say that. <laughs> so I froze. So I said, oh, that was you I was talking to on the phone. Wow. Did it like that. Oh, that was you I was talking to on the phone. Oh, okay. I just want the tickets. I said it like that. That was cold for I don't want them to So I got the tickets because I had turned them in and I left. When I went out the door thinking, whew, I'm about to get whooped. You never know nowadays. And they got rights. They got rights. And lefts. So you better be cool now. Anyway, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. This is why we cannot do things that go against Yahweh's word and then act like we haven't sinned. Every time people leave, I always pause. People get mad, disputes and them stuff going. They always blame the priesthood. So that's all right. I, I have to take that. But I always go to Yahweh and I ask if I did something to drive them away. Take the fault first and foremost. I take it. But in the event that word is so hardcore that it drives the devil away, truth be told, that's what you want Yahweh's word to do. Because Yahweh's word ain't going to do but one of two things every day of all of our lives. It will draw you closer to him or drive you far from him. Ain't no need of trying to do nothing in between. You're going to have to do some work. If you say you try to serve Yahweh, somewhere along the line, you cannot be an Israelite here. here. Say, hey, shalom, brother. How you doing? Never, had, never know nothing. Never understand nothing. Years ago, brother was here a few years back. Every Shabbat, as soon as the service is over, I would put my material stuff away, come out and greet the people. Hey, as soon as you get to him, maybe you know, brother, how you doing? <sighs> Always was depressed, all the time, bad mood, problem. And I'm gonna tell you all what I did. One Shabbat, that spirit jumped on me. When he said that, it depressed me so bad. I walked outside. And shook it all because I realized I had shook his hand. And that spirit of depression had hit me. And I walked around and back to this parking lot and I prayed and had to shake that spirit off. But you know what I did from that Shabbat forward? And this wasn't mean, this wasn't evil. From that Shabbat forward, I would never ask him how he was doing. Because if Yahweh can't heal you and you don't want to come up out of that funk, keep that funk on you. Keep that sin on you. Keep that spirit on you. And when he came here to talk to me one time, he came here smelling like we was stuck like a stump. I walked, he wanted to talk in private. I walked him, I sat down here, he sat right there. I walked him this close, I wanted to see, we got a tradition here, many of us that when you can and you are able, we come in before service, like we kneel at the altar, we kneel down and we pray. You ain't got to pray, you don't need 99 hours to pray. Yahweh said, when you make them great long prayers, I will not hear you. you, ain't got, you Yahweh knows, you get down, you ask for what you need, you make your petition normal for Yahweh, you move on. The Catholics do that. Pray a billion times. Now you don't know if they're praying or on death, going into convulsion. You don't know. That's not how we address y'all. We make our petition known. Right? He said, any, you know you getting on the nerves of the Most High. Anytime he tell you, when you make great long prayers, I will not hear you. Y'all do know that's in the scriptures, right? He said, when you make great long prayers, I will not hear you. Even, 
even the great eternal one who has nothing but time on his hand don't want you wasting all your time faking a move in prayer how long does it take to ask for something right come on man test your children Bring a cake in the house just put it in the refrigerator test your children see how long it takes them to ask for it come on can I ask them that cake Get time on him. He said that in less than two seconds. He, Ma, Monday, Tuesday, Ken, Wednesday, Ah, uh, Thursday, Ah, uh, y'all done ate it and it's gone. So, why take all that long to pray to Yahweh for what we need? Want to be seen, make great long prayer that we might be seen of men. Nah. Do your prayer, make your petitions known, and wait on Yahweh. Don't go asking if you don't believe. That's what a lot of time our problem is just we really don't believe. We just ask for something and then don't believe it. Well, what do you what do you think you're gonna get? Come on, man. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we call him a liar. Let's make sure we say that, not make him a liar. We call him a liar. And his word is not in us. Ain't that simple? Yes. You can't get around and say you ain't got no sin. You ain't got for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us. That is exactly what we have done. See, a great deal of the corruption and now influences a lot of the latter day Hebrews come from a lack of knowledge in Yahweh. And thus a lack of fellowship with him. Okay. When, when you look at 1 John 2.18, watch this. He says, little children, it is the last time. As you have heard that the Antimassah shall come, even now are there many Antimassahs, whereby we know that it is the last time. So this confusion among the assemblies today or among the new convert, new way to say the name, new way to watch the moon coming in, new way, if you notice, all this new stuff is bringing new confusion. The new moon is the full moon. This is the type of stuff that people are teaching now. The new moon. So here it is, big and it's full. A complete circle up in the sky. Now you've been watching it for 14 days. And it's new. But yet there are two days out of the month where it disappears. You don't see it. You're supposed to be counting, but you don't see it. Then it comes back. Doesn't that sound like it has renewed? itself so how can we get off track except it be the spirit of the devil that we had to go out and they watched through the new moon he said if he see it he shoot the arrow he let him know he come to the new moon supper if it was safe I'll show you the system how I'll shoot the arrow out oh man yeah but they watched for the moon who's watching for a full moon it's right there make sense I know by the end of the message you go up, you know, I heard what he said, but I'm going to tell you something right now. Man. Don't trust that L. Johnson. And, and, and watch one of y'all do it. Uh, put your hand up. Who can do it? Who, who? No volunteer? Praise Yahweh. But anyway, we have to know this. So now, 1 John 2.18, he says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were what not all of us not all of us in other words not at all where they see a Israelite won't keep the commandment of Yahweh he going to keep it he's not going to set up his own rules he's not going to do his own thing he's not going to go against the established order of how Yahweh set it up I think a lot of times men just want power so that's the first thing they attack is the men that they think are in the position this preaching brothers preaching is one of the toughest jobs in all of the universe because if you do this thing wrong you could end up with blood on your hands you hear what I'm saying? So that's how men do this. So anxious to teach people. So anxious to tell you something. So anxious to do this. Anxious to do that. <laughs> Sometimes you got to really lay back and just observe. 
years and years, Elder Johnson would teach and then sit down with me and talk. Y'all get a lot out of me. You didn't get out of him. He would teach, spend all his energy in a sermon, and then sit down and eat, be just quiet. Then go on off and sit down somewhere by himself. Not that he was selfish or standoffish. He just stood there and put all his heart and soul into the word, deliver a message. Only to know people still weren't going to take heed. Somebody was going to steal buck. And, come on, I've seen it. Man came in December years ago with his little dark sunglasses on. On the Shabbat Eve, Friday night. He got on black dark sunglasses. When did you receive revelation? And I said, what? When did you receive revelation? He said, when did you receive one? Why don't you ask the one that gave it to me? Good question. I was like, ha, he got you. He was from the Divine Metaphysical Institute for Biblical Research. <laughs> now, y'all gonna look them up, but they still out here. But see, some of this stuff with all these old, long, sounding, sophisticated names, it ain't of Yahweh. Yahweh addressed us as a nation. He said, let the whole house of Israel know. You hear what I'm saying? They go for all of us. If you're in Atlanta, you're in Florida, you're in this place, you're in that place. If you are Israel, you are the house of Israel. He said, that's why Yahweh told him, that's what you put on the name of the place. Put that there, the house of Israel. The man said, hey, well, I'm from the Divine Metaphysical Institute for Bible Research. See, now y'all getting into the metaphysics and all this other stuff, which is getting scientific and all. Come on, man. That's the way the world works. Now, that was 20 some years ago. They far worse now because, see, everybody knows. Everybody teaching. Hey, learn biblical Hebrew in five minutes. Learn the Bible in 30 minutes or less. Uh, everybody got this guaranteed way. Make it into the kingdom to come. But you don't hear nobody teaching how to go to hell in a split second. Just want you all to know that's how it's going. But you have an unction from the Kodesh one, and you know all things. He don't mean you know everything. He means now, I didn't taught you, so now you can feel this stuff out. You know it for yourself. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Yahshua is Hamashiach? He is anti messiah that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denies the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father. Now, let's be clear because you're going to have some that are going to come and accept the Father and accept the Son and yet still not be his. You're going to have them. How do you know? Because he said, many should come in my name saying I am the Messiah. Some are going to come saying it both ways. I'm the Messiah. I'm the one. Or some are going to come say Yahshua is the Messiah. But you'll still not be sincere. See, a real man of Yahweh, he ain't going to teach you nothing. He ain't going to do nothing to violate what's written in the book. You got to know the code just like he got to know the code. You hear what I'm saying? There are military terms, military servicemen. One man say something to the other man. It, it's in Latin. Marine Corps do it all the time. They say one thing and those that are in the rank or whatever, he respond back in Latin. They know what's what. It's a brotherhood. It's the same with Israel. We have to know the law. Ain't no secret code. In there. It's just the way Yahweh encouraged us to obey it and keep it. You know what you know. You hear me? Whole world trying to be you right now. People trying to steal your crown. While I brought that subject up, let me make this point real quick. You really do have to watch yourselves because there are people out here that are crown stealers. Stop thinking everybody your friend. Sometimes some people are not even the children of Yahweh and are yet so evil their sole purpose and omission is to simply destroy you. You all think you won't encounter nobody like that. You know what? Everybody thinks stuff like that until something happens that ain't too pretty. Then they get robbed. Till you fall down and fly the stairs. Anybody that ain't never fell down stairs, they are unsympathetic to somebody who's fallen down some steps and broke something. Right? Somebody that's never experienced robbery at gunpoint or something like that, they hear it, they're thankful, they've never experienced it, or whatever the case may be. But when you are on the other end of a thing, then you look up and it's not well. Somebody that ain't never been trapped in an elevator, they don't know the fear or claustrophobia that it caused for somebody that's been trapped in an elevator for hours. Right? Now all of a sudden you in it and you look up and now realize it's not a good feeling. You hear me? 
So it's the same with Yisrael. You've never encountered a soul snatcher or somebody whose job it is to really deceive you because they sitting there pretending they in the word. Come on, man. I tell Yisrael all the time, calm down. Most of our new converts in Israel are in such a hurry to learn stuff and then in such a hurry to go teach stuff that those are the ones that mess up everything because they're in such a hurry to do it. My brother taught me a very valuable lesson about driving. When I was young, my brother got his license. I wasn't old enough to get mine, but he was happy to have his license. Gas on his chest. He want to drive, want to drive, want to drive. My sister's car was messed up. My father put it in the shop. My brother got it. My father said, take this straight to the house. My brother jumped in the car, went to a ride somewhere real quick and go someplace else and dipped around the car and bam, hit a trash truck. Father just got the car out the shop, $800 worth of work. Back in the 70s or 80s, I'm not sure when, $800 worth of work. That was a lot of money back then. Didn't have a car on the street two hours. Money just thrown away. Years later, still driving. Like to drive, like to be seen. Coming from service down to D.C. one time, looking at a girl. Bam! Ran to the back of a car. Wrecked a couple of cars. It taught me something. Get your driver's license. Stay humble. Do not be in a hurry to drive. Because my biggest fear was hitting somebody. I've been driving since I was 17. I'm almost 60 now. I had one accident. I had that automobile accident July the 2nd, 1998. I learned Elder Johnson passed away and I was leaving the hospital and all. I went there, closed his eyes, I prayed, did everything, and then I left and I was crying. And my eyes watered up. And I misjudged the car in front of me and I cleared my eyes long enough and I couldn't stop. And I tapped this couple. They didn't report it, wasn't a whole lot of damage, anything. I told the man, we'll just check it and see what it is. The man went to the shop, got it. They claimed it was $600 worth of damage to his bumper, whatever. I paid it out of my pocket, NBA, technically speaking. I'm on the record, I've never had an accident. But I learned that from my brother. Don't be in a hurry to do nothing. My father used to say, don't be in a hurry to do Yahweh's work. You go according to his time. And that's why Yahweh, if men pay attention, called them young men in their priesthood at, 10, at, at 20 years of age. Then the scripture gives you a clue and a hint that Yahshua began to preach right around 30. Now, if he was the law, and he knew the law, and John is saying here, <clears throat> the testimony that we had from, <clears throat> from the beginning, he brought this, so might as well use it, right? <coughs> Pardon me. Here we are. If John is saying that we had this from the beginning and that he was the word, then we need to apply it the way that it is. Y'all sure is the word. Am I correct? We need to live it. Let's get these couple scriptures out of the way real quick. <coughs> there are benefits to our fellowship. When we go to Psalms 94, verse 16, we learn something real quick about the benefits of it. Psalm 94, 16 says these very words. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless Yahweh had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, my foot slippeth, Thy mercy, O Yahweh, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, they are my comforts. Thy commandment, thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law? See, now if fellowship denotes a partnership, and then our partnership leads us, as Romans says, as heirs with him and then joint heirs. How then can we do iniquity or wicked things and have fellowship with Yahweh? Notice, doing all we do by our own law. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But Yahweh is my defense and my Elohim is the rock of my refuge. He shall bring upon them 
their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yeah, Yahweh shall cut them off. This is why you don't have to worry with the wicked. Sometimes the wicked look like they're gaining more and more strength, but it's like a pimple. Eventually, it's got to come to a head. Yahweh knows, okay? That's why Israel got to calm down and say, no, nah, I'm going to obey Yahweh as best I can. In the book of the Acts, chapter 2, verse 36, again, in dealing with the benefits of our fellowship, we learn now. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Yahweh have made that same Yahshua whom you have crucified, both master and the anointed one. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent, meaning go away from your sins, stop now, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahshua for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. For the promise is unto you and to your two. See, parents, this is on you. You can't just be no airhead and not uh, confirm the word of Yahweh with your children. You have to go over this with them. Don't leave your children out here all alone in the world and just assuming that they believe it and learn it, sitting under the elder. You have to teach them. Get on them. Cut that TV off and go to bed. Shut that noise up. They don't need that rap music. You teach them. You don't teach them, then they get out here later on in the world, get hooked up with their little friends, little friends jumping them into gangs and, and got them into little closet homosexuality and all this other stuff going on. This world has an agenda. They're introducing that stuff to your children. And then you sit back as parents think, oh, they all right. They ain't all right. They crazy as hell now, and you know it. You just don't know what to do. You let it go too long. So you keep lying, telling yourself, they all right. They're not all right. You ain't look in his eyes and see what's happening? Or you ain't look in her eyes? For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as Yahweh our Elohim will call. And with many other words that he testified and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and in the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. See how they sat down and even ate together. Now you know we like to eat. Come on now. now tell me we don't. You like the, I see some of y'all, y'all got to get around the table, circle the table like a vulture. I need the biggest piece of chicken. I need the biggest, I need the biggest steak. Mm, and what's that? Mm, sit down and eat. Scripture say, eat what's set before you. Ask no questions for conscience. Ain't that what it say? Well, you swear, yo, the book of the Acts. Lays that out for us. Real quick in Ephesians. He does the same thing again. Ephesians chapter 5. I think a lot of times. Polo just well. They don't read as well as they think they do. David Wiggins used to do something. When people would come in the think tank. He come in a lot of times. We got all this energy. We got all this mouth. We want to talk. Want to be seen. Want to be heard. But now Wiggins would always give people this test. When they came in with too much energy. And he heard their points. Or agreed with them. What have you. He had his little books. That would have a point. That might agree with what they were saying. He said, yeah, you're right. You know what? Here, do me a favor. Read this. Read this out loud. Now, it was an interesting test. Because what reading does is it gauges how well a person is able to comprehend. So now a person that's reading every other word and reading slow and all that, you know that their comprehension. Now, I've had brothers like that even come in here like that. Now, they don't read very well, but they pretend that they're such great and master. Reading is nothing but talking written down. Right? Yes, now, if you will write that sentence out, punctuating it, sometimes the punctuation would vary, you would say, reading, comma, is nothing but talking, written down, period. Or you could say, reading, comma, is nothing but talking, comma, now, exclamation point. 
Now, if you can read it, you understand, okay, they said that with Lil Dottie, when you see the exclamation point, whereas with the period, it was just a simple declaration. Well, those that understand punctuation, therefore, are comprehending better. But now you got men trying to teach you and preach to you, but yet they can't properly read. How then can they comprehend it when you hear them read like a third grader? Come on, Israel, talk to me. Because, see, I've had men try to read scripture to me and stumble over. Ephesians 5 1. Be ye therefore followers of Yahweh as did you. Now, can y'all understand that? And walk in love as Hamashiach has also loved us. And had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Yahweh for sweet smelling sake. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not once be named among you as becometh Kedushim. I know a man, he was sitting right here in the sanctuary. Dining room table, we all sit, eat and talk. I sit across from he talking. Sisters getting food and they serving people. This is blunt, but I'm going to be straightforward. You're sitting across from him, you're talking to him, you're conversing with him. His eyes shifting in the moment. He's looking. Watching every sister that's walking. So I said one day, I said, yeah, that's interesting. You just reminded me. I was thinking about a sermon that Johnson preached years ago called The Roaming Eye. And it looked straight at the man. He was preaching about men, always looking and gawking at women. The Roaming Eye. Brothers like the lost books and the lost books of, of Sirach, he warns the young man, keep thine eye when thou goest about the town. He warns you. Scripture goes further about gazing and gawking upon a beautiful woman. He warns you. But see, when you marry, and then that's how you live in and thinking, that's the type of stuff that's in your heart. But then you think Yahweh ain't got no messages that can discern and peep it when you're living like that. And that's how your mind is. You should look at every daughter of Yah as a mother. As your sister or as your daughters. But you can't teach that to men who think they know or think they slicking in an oil spill out in Alaska somewhere. You hear what I'm saying? I ain't talking something I'm making up. I'm talking what I know. So today, you can't teach people. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting. Which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Hamashiach and of Yahweh. Let no man deceive you with vain words. This is what Yahweh tells us. For because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh upon the children of disobedience. Don't let nobody fool y'all with vain words and slick, smooth compliments and all that stupid stuff, because Daniel, stay right there. Let me go back and get this. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Just one little warning that we all should be well aware of. Daniel says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. See that? If it's in your mind to be a sellout, a traitor, or anything of that nature, the devil will send somebody to corrupt you by flat. You know, you're very wise. You should be this or you should be that. Or, oh, man, I don't, I don't know. You great. And, oh, come on now. But the people that do know their Elohim shall be strong and do his commandments. Now, some books may say do acts or do exploits, but it just simply means they're going to keep doing what Yahweh commands. You ain't worried about no man complimenting you, okay? They that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall, look, by the sword. That means some of them going to kill you. And by flame, and by captivity, and by spoil, many days. Then see how Yahweh's people going to end up. A lot of them going to get murdered by the sword, by flame, by captivity, by spoil. Because somebody will sell you out. All for position, power, and influence. I thank Yahweh that we have stayed here in this little bitty place and stayed small. Hallelujah. See how it is? Just a little bitty place, a little small. How do you run a mutiny in a little bitty place that less than 50 feet? A mutiny. Like you taking over the ship at the Poseidon Adventure or something. How do you run a mutiny? This is the stuff that has happened over and over and over. I'm going to tell you all a little secret to it. Ain't but one way to prevent it. 
Everybody got to be rooted and grounded in the word of Yahweh well enough when you recognize an evil whispering spirit trying to pump you up or trying to flatter you. You yourself have to recognize, I can't come to your house and recognize no wrongdoing for you. I got enough to fight with every day of my own life. You hear what I say? I watched the man do some stuff up there. He's stealing. Look, I don't get this. I'm going to hook you up. No, no, no. You ain't going to hook me up. I ain't got nothing to do with it. You, mm -mm, I ain't. you doing what you're doing. You do that crap away from me. Oh, man. Everybody need a little money. I ain't say another word. Sometimes your response is everything. If I, well, not everybody. No, I, no I, I never said another word. Yeah, his word warns us not to steal, conduct ourselves, then there's a way we got to be conducting ourselves, okay? So, let's go back to Ephesians real quick. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things, the wrath of Yahweh come upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers with them. See that? For you were sometimes darkness. In other words, in the past you walked in darkness, but now you are what? Light. In Yahweh, walk as children of the light. See, you don't need no conniving, you don't need no subterfuge, no subtility, none of that stuff. Man. All you got to do is obey Yahweh, right? I don't have to get with him and plot against you, right? I ain't got to get with you and plot against him or vice versa. All we have to do is keep everything above board. Do you know that's how you can then get along with one another and be so glad to see each other? See what I'm saying? Can I use this as an example? Brother Lloyd brought something last night. It ain't had nothing to do with me. What it is, it ain't nobody been. I'm just saying he brought something in. And when I saw the boxes, I wasn't even expecting to see him last night. So then being glad to see him, I, Brother Lloyd got two pizzas. That's all right. He bust out laughing himself. As an example, glad to see one another. We had a small moment. We just, a laugh transpired between two people. Nothing envious, nothing. What's that? Give me that. Well, I, uh, come here, and come me out. Not another sort. Just brotherly love. We as the always people got to know how to exercise brotherly love when you see one another. When I was a child, there was a mother. Elder mother, mother Nettie. I was a little boy. My parents didn't play that. You went to the assembly, they put neat clothes on you. You wasn't fashion plate. They just cleaned you up. That generation where you took a bath, you put your little, as they called you, you your, your Sunday go meet and close, whatever the older generation called it. But anyway, Mother Natty, she used to always tease me. I loved her dearly. I missed her so much when she passed. She would always say to me, this, we didn't have an assembly, then we'd go in their house, have assembly in the home. She used to say, who this little preacher here? Don't come in my house, them little bitty suits on, looking like a little man. And my mother and father put the little three-piece suits on me, little bow tie, you know, little clip on tie. So little children look so sharp when you put that stuff on them. But she was... As a child, everybody's huge to you. So I don't know really her size, but she was bigger than me. So she scared me. And I would always run behind my father. Daddy, make him leave me alone. You know, I was just scared. And she would get a kick out of that because mother really loved me. But when you get older to realize that people pass away in Yahweh and you really do miss one another. I read a letter last night. <clears throat> Thought I was going to make it through today, but I see I didn't. I read a letter last night from Brother Larry Brockett. And he reminded us that he hadn't been here in a while. Because he's slowly but surely losing his eyesight. And as I thought about that thing, like the Apostle Paul told Israel, he ceased not to warn us night and day for the space of three years. Without tears, because this thing will really make you cry sometime. And think about Mother Carla Sanford, Brother Nathaniel Cease, and ever so many other years for life. Uh, uh, I forget the Ahoti's name. Her husband is, is, is incarcerated right now. Different ones. People are suffering. They go through little child tribulations. My beloved brother, leg bothering me different stuff that some of us go through and you realize, okay, we're all paying for our sins. And we're going to pay for them sins until Yahweh corrects it and sends Yahshua to establish a kingdom. But we are not without hope. So you pray for one another. Even when you feel wronged or mistreated, 
my brothers or sisters in the faith. Pray for one another that Yahweh's will be done, that even if space be given for repentance. But when I, I read that brother's letter last night, that thing really, really bothered me. Because you do look up from time to time and to just see brothers and sisters and different ones in the assembly that you haven't seen for a while. It is always an honor and a pleasure to see all the children of Israel as well as to serve Yahweh's people, but when you don't get to talk to some because some have been hospitalized, uh, Brother Anthony Golden and others have suffered and struggled but have not hesitated to sometimes just write a letter or brothers and sisters going through hard times, just, just enough to write a letter and let somebody know that they had troubles and, and, and been through things and just asking that you keep them in prayer. That means so much because... I remember when I went through child tribulation, somebody had to pray for me. And I don't cry because I'm weak or I'm broke down or anything in that nature, but it just, you got to really love one another to know you ain't going to make it unless you really stick with Yahweh's word and be with each other in a way where you're able to offer comfort in a moment's notice. Or you that can get a prayer through. Pray for somebody other than yourself. Stop being so concerned with only yourself. Sometimes brothers and sisters that are in greater need won't even let you know. But just keep right on striving. Just so happy knowing that as all of us draw near to the end of the age and whatever our last moments are in this earth, so many people have come to realize Yahweh's real. And if I die in this lifetime, I'll die having lived right, knowing that I'll see him again. That's what I love about Yisrael. And that's what makes these letters, whether you type them or handwrite them, that's what makes it so personal sometimes because people take the time to write you or text and call. Dear sister, called me the other day. I was in the class and I texted her, let her know I'll give you a call soon as I get out of the class will get dismissed and I forgot and I felt so bad because I got out of the class after four and I try to always return the calls to Yahweh's children if I can but it wasn't until 9 23 that night when I thought about it, I said I hope it ain't too late let me call because I did response I'll call as soon as possible and what made it so beautiful was she said it's not even late here it's 6 23 I think it was Ooh. So it was 623 there, whereas it was nine something here. And we spoke for just a few moments. And I prayed about the issue that she brought to my mind. I thought about so many other people that are on that channel that really believe in the word of Yahweh as we read it to them, or as we should say, rehearse it. Because this is all you're doing. You're rehearsing in our ears that which has already been done. It's nothing great that we do. It's Yahweh's word. And it is the way in which the Ruach moves us or motivates us. That sometimes in the hearing of your ears, whether it comes across in the form of a rebuke or an exhortation or a plea. Whatever the case may be, we feel that living word of Yahweh. And that's what makes us a family. There's no standard but the Torah of Yahweh to worship here. Unlike the church, we ain't got no rules. You got to come here and show me your W-2s and you got to do this, you got to do that. The rules are keep my commandments and live. Hallelujah. Those are the rules. And that's what we want to really strive to live by. So some of them names I just named, some of them brothers and sisters, you all might not know them or know of them. Do me a favor and join in with me as we pray for one another. That as Yahweh be with us, as we are healed by him, even as we grow older, health conditions and things that will deteriorate the body. Remember now, you above 50 years of age, then that's a 50-year-old heart in that body. It ain't like you can run up to the Ford dealer and get a new one. And those are 50-year-old kidneys or 60, 70 year old lungs, you know, it's in that body. Keep one another in mind. Pray for one another and not just 
Make it all about yourself. Have some love. Because like that scripture says, and this is so beautiful, he says, among yourselves, have a fervent love. For love shall cover a multitude of sins. And that's what we want to do. Ephesians 5, 1 through 13, as well as 1 Corinthians 10, 15 through 20, teach us of the dangers of corrupt fellowship. You definitely don't want to be caught hanging out with people that are really not of Yahweh, not trying, but yet pretending and falsifying every way. You just want to do right. And you have every right to strive to do right. But we only got to learn to love one another. We got to do better by it. When I said we got to do better, that means me, that means you, that means us. We really have to strive to do better by one another, to really live right. Cut out the gossip. You know, you don't need to know everybody's business to serve Yahweh. You don't need to be in everything, especially if you ain't really helping. If you ain't doing the thing, you know, come on. We have a charge. And the charge is that we are commanded to obey. Because the world ain't trying to obey. Okay, the world ain't trying to do it. If you look at the things that are taking place in the earth now, you can clearly see this is the end time, y'all. Come on now. How long are you going to go along with the whole gay rights agenda? The whole uh, Republican versus the Democrats and all this, we're fighting against this and that. Oh, we're against the crime. Again, crime has sent us in the army. So you can't tell me about the crime taking place in the streets of Baltimore and we don't want to talk about the crime taking place on Capitol Hill. Or the crime taking place in Silicon Valley. Come on, you can't do that to me. It's all sin in the eyes of the Almighty. So those of us that have the commandments of life within us, we're compelled to do it because, I'm going to say this again, and I know this offended some brothers, but I, I don't care that this offended them. I know you don't know the word of Yahweh. But to say that being selfish when it comes to salvation is speaking in the flesh then you really don't know the word of Yahweh. You keep on trying to spread love and hang out there with your family that ain't living right and you tolerating everybody because you don't want to be selfish enough where well, you got to get up and go. You can't save neither father nor mother nor husband nor wife. Yahweh's word said that though these three men were in my city, Noah, Daniel, and Job, they could save no one but their own souls by their righteousness. So when I say this is the one time in life you have the absolute right to be selfish. If husband or wife won't go and you know Yahweh is the one and only way, you got to let that person go. Yeah. And that don't mean that you got to get your bag, get out of my house. They may be in the same house with you, but yet not going the same road you're going. You cannot now keep on fellowshipping spiritually like that and go down with the ship trying not to show partiality. Yahweh showed us that the whole world ain't going to keep it. So you all do me a favor and pray for our brothers and sisters and remember the various ones in their hour of need. If it's going well with you, then Baruch his Kodesh name. But while it's well with you, take a moment, pause, and remember someone else that it may not be so well with. Keep them in mind. I read letters and things like that. And that stuff really does something to me. And it commands me to pray as well. Because you don't know your fate in this earth and in this lifetime. You're all going to die. I hear every time somebody dies, first question, person that. You always know what they say, right? How did they die? People always want to know how a person died. Well, the, the steps are real simple. You stop breathing. Right? You want to know all, all the terms and the medical details. It didn't give the details of the prophet when he was ready to die. The scripture says that when it was time for Elijah to die of the sickness of which he was to die. That's what the book said. We're going that way. We're going the way of what does the scripture call it? The way of all the earth. We don't know those things like that. There was something going on in last Shabbat. I have a plant in my house. A dumb cane. This is about seven feet tall. It's, it's 90 inches tall. I was trying to groom it and keep it growing. I just wanted to see it hit the ceiling before I cut it. And it was about six to eight inches from the ceiling. And I was praying about some things. And some people had done some things in the name of Yahweh that was just so disturbing. And I asked Yahweh to have mercy upon those that are yours. 
and keep us from the midst of that destruction because those that have done the wrong and what they have done I ask that if it be your will let us not be in the way when you knock them down and I heard my Isha say oh no the plant just fell over I was upstairs sitting on the bed praying that y'all would spare Israel and those of us that simply want to do right and that we not be with those who have transgressed as you knock them down and my plant fell over you ask her I told her I said I was praying and at the precise moment I asked y'all go after those that have sought to destroy his people knock them down but move your people out the way she said it just toppled over it toppled over. I take it as a sign, as a testimony to answer prayer. We don't want to be in the way as Yahweh's fighting, as people are fighting Yahweh and Yahweh rise up and fight back. So, Yisrael, I admonish you. If you love Yahweh and you're sincere, then you keep his commandment. Don't keep on falling victim to the same thing over and over again and you're not going to inquire of Yahweh as to why this is happening now. Sometimes we go through stuff over and over again. We don't never pay attention. We don't never take no, just keep on going like everything is all right. No, you have to not operate from the perspective that everything is all right. Ask Abba Yahweh, what have I done wrong to incur these things? And if so, then we strive to simply get right. In conclusion, I say to you all, I ain't nobody great. I ain't nobody special in Israel. Just a lowly little servant. I was raised in this way of life and I know coming up as a child sometimes it seemed a little hard to me but when I compare the payment of a transgressor I realize this way ain't hard at all. I thank Yahweh that my father was hard on me. Don't you all get too angry with me if I preach or teach and if something is a little hard on you just get right with Yahweh. Bear with me because I want to see you benefit. I want to see you do well. I watched all the people that I work with, different ones, they announced that they got their pay raises and different things that happened this week because I turned in the ratings and the way different ones work to try to help everybody get along. I didn't have to lie or make up anything. I just gave honest ratings and suggestions and I noticed that everyone on the team got their raises and they were so happy as they all kept trying to thank me. And I eased on up out the door and out the way thinking to myself, you don't have to thank me for doing what was right. But what I would prefer that they learn to do, just thank Yahweh. So I say the same to you all. As I pray for you and you pray for me, you're praying that our ratings be approved. That Yahweh give us the raise that we need. And the raise we want is that raise in that great day that he calls. Do you hear me? The first resurrection. Not the second. Do you hear me? Pray for one another. Pray for that raise. Pray that we make it and meet in that kingdom. Where the blessing of Yah is always restored. Where people like Brother Larry don't have to worry about this site. Where Mother Carver doesn't have to worry about arthritis. Where Brother Anthony doesn't have to worry about breathing. Where dear brother doesn't have to, Brother Ed doesn't have to worry about legs and different things. We don't have to worry about diabetes or high blood pressure or whatever it may be. Pray that Abba Yahweh grant unto all of us that perfect gift of eternal life. I don't know nobody who will want to miss that. And on that note, let us stand for our bust out crime one more time. Almighty Yah, we ask you in the precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach that you be with us as your people. Help us to stand, especially in these last and extremely evil days. Help us to learn to love one another. Bring any of our faults and failures to our eyes and to our hearts and minds that we may be able to go from those sins, to go far from them. To turn unto you, to have a heart and a mind to love you all the more, but to become more strict and stringent in your word that we may hit that perfect mark of salvation that you are calling for. We know, Abba Yah, that if you have called for the perfection of Israel, that then we are capable of doing it because you will put no more upon us than we are 
able to bear. We ask that you baruch your people, both far and near, both small and great. Touch the hearts and minds of those that are yet to be born. Give them a mind to simply obey you. Be with those that are yet to awaken to the greatness and the knowledge of your truth. Have mercy upon us, Abiyah, so that we're not counted with those who will see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom, and we ourselves thrust out, but that we are able to sit down at the feet of your great ones and to hear the greatness of the testimony from here and through all eternity. This blessing we ask, Abba Yahweh, for all real and true Israel, as well as the multitude of the Gentiles that are to come out of the tribulation and turn unto you. This blessing we ask as you write in this earth, in Yahshua's precious name, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Israel, enjoy the rest of your Shabbat. Love and honor to you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.